guys like the uh, lava lamp behind me? It's because I have nothing on that wall, so I put that there from somewhere else because it looks so boring otherwise. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're doing something a little bit different, but I'm really excited for it. We're covering the first 100 levels of the back rooms. It's gonna be big and expansive. Before we do that though, I'm gonna give you a little bit of context about the back rooms and discuss the canon that we'll actually be taking a look at because there's multiple ver different versions of the back rooms you could talk about. Uh, if you're not interested in that and you just wanna get straight to the back rooms, they should be sectioned into chapters. Let's go. So basically, did you hear that? Ah! The Sagan Hawks plush is now available thanks to my amazing partnership with Makeship. Makeship has done plushes for other spooky YouTubers in the past that you may have seen, and that now includes me. <laughs> Just look at that. that, that devilish grin. What a handsome young lad. This guy is available for 21 days or less, depending on when you're watching this, before he's gone forever. Help me hit the goal of 200 of these guys sold and I will be eternally grateful. Plus, you get your own little evil version of me in your own home. Seriously, working with Makeship has been a breeze. It's been so amazing and I basically was allowed to design this whole thing, although the design team there did a great job helping me with that. By getting one of these, you're supporting me and helping me continue to create content and you get a really awesome product. So go ahead, link in the description, get you one of these guys, 21 more days or less. I would really appreciate it. That would be amazing if we could hit the 200 goal. Get them all you can. Anyway, so the back rooms. Most of you probably already know what this is. Spawning from a 4chan X post back in May of 2019 on a thread of disquieting images. The image shows off an off-kilter angle of what appears to be a dingy office space or back room. This went along perfectly with the largely growing internet obsession with liminal spaces, images of places that feel empty. Creepy. Off. The backroom's photo could have easily been lost in the mix, but what set it apart was the short blurb of text that the poster sent along with it. If you're not careful and you no-clip out of reality in the wrong areas, you'll end up in the backrooms, where it's nothing but the stink of old moist carpet, the madness of mono yellow, the endless background noise of fluorescent lights at maximum humbuzz, and approximately 600 million square miles of randomly segmented empty rooms to be trapped in. God save you if you hear something wandering nearby, because it sure as hell heard you. This bite-sized piece of lore is really what made the back room stand out. It was just enough to spark interest, to create a sense of dread and eeriness, the concept of being totally isolated in this creepy place with no chance of escape. Plus, the use of the word no clipping almost gave it a hint of simulation theory, like the world acts the same way as a video game would. But at the same time, it might also just be a convenient way to explain what this in-between space really is, this space that is between physical space. It is truly liminal, but it's left up to your own interpretation, which is why it's so great. At the same time, it never gave enough to fill in those gaps for people, so you saw this community begin to grow around it, expanding on the ideas. One of the biggest examples of this that also helped skyrocket the backrooms into the stratosphere as of recently was the short film and now series created by Kane Pixels, the Backrooms Found Footage series. Kane Pixels is a 17-year-old filmmaker and VFX artist, and going all the way back through his channel, you can see he's been honing his craft for some time now, even at only 17 years old. But the video that blew him up, and in concurrence, the Backrooms, was his first video on the Backrooms series. Uploaded in January of 2022, the Backrooms Found Footage. Aside from just the great concept, following someone who's fallen into the back rooms, the execution was insane, which I really think is what made it so eye-catching. Almost the entire thing was created using Blender, a 3D modeling and animation software, but everything looks so incredibly realistic, in no small part because of the very authentic looking camera movement. It also helps that the VHS effect can cover up some of the imperfections. The journey through the back rooms that shows up in this video doesn't just stop at endless hallways, and we see both original new areas and concepts created by Kane Pixels, and and incredibly accurate recreations of liminal space photos that were already pretty popular. The series has gone on to become increasingly popular, and expanded its own universe's lore even more, but it's worth noting, Kane Pixel's version of the Backrooms is a different canon than the one we'll be going in depth on today. But it's important to note that the influence that Kane Pixels has had on both growing the Backrooms community and inspiring other creators to make similar found footage Backrooms videos from humorous to genuinely eerie. 
Many times these aren't being done in the Kane Pixels universe, but taking inspiration from one of the many sub-communities that created their own canon. So let's talk about those, the ones we'll actually be pulling from today. There are tons of different communities dedicated to creating and archiving their own canons of the backrooms. Most of these are separated into levels, where as you go deeper, they begin to look stranger and different from the regular backrooms. There are a lot of different sites that compile their own separate canons, from the backrooms fandom wiki, to the wiki dot, to the subreddit. All have similarities, but vary in content and at times quality. They compile exhaustive amounts of information on the universe, from descriptions of the levels themselves, to stories of wanderers in the backrooms, outposts, and entities that inhabit the backrooms world. In this way, it feels very much like the world of SCP, just in its infancy. It's genuinely interesting seeing how close these two communities actually are, and I'm sure these backroom worlds are taking inspiration from SCP. It's this giant collaborative effort to create a world, and I think that's genuinely cool. So. For this video, I had to choose a source, a canon to draw from. Which one did I choose? Well, looking through a lot of these with a few friends, I found the most consistent writing-wise seemed to be the wiki.1. So we'll be starting with the Backrooms wiki.canon, the first 100 levels. Before we get into the levels themselves though, I should probably bring up some stuff that's probably going to come up a lot in these, just some basic concepts that are important when talking about the backrooms in this canon. First, let's take a look at the basics. The backrooms is a large space outside of known reality. Time doesn't work the same, and there are dangerous entities lurking in the shadows. In order to enter the backrooms, you have to no-clip. While there's no guaranteed way for this to work, you can identify possible entrances by looking for walls that are a darker shade than the rest, places that feel uneasy or strangely electric, or falling down the stairs. That one has no guarantees. In general, if you're lucky enough to actually succeed, you'll end up in level zero, but you can find yourself in other levels as well, it's just much rarer. Once you enter the back rooms, you'll likely never make it back out. So if you're trying to get in, make sure to bring the proper equipment and be ready for the first day of the rest of your life. The basics guide suggests first aid kits, canteens, a backpack, and a flashlight. There's a lot more info in the basics guide that I'm referencing here, so for more details, you can read the whole thing yourself. You should also probably be prepared for some of the entities that you may run into in your journey. While you may be able to find other wanderers in your travels, you're just as likely, if not more likely, to find some malevolent creatures ready to tear you apart. So we won't be going over them all, but we can talk about a few. Maybe in a future video we can go over all the entities. Be aware of windows, which appear to have a figure on the other side trying to beckon you closer. These probably aren't actually another fellow wanderer. More likely, it's an evil entity trying to lure you in and pull you inside. Smilers are glowing, smiling faces with a cartoon appearance that are attracted to light. You'll have to get pretty used to dealing with these guys because they're not at all uncommon to run into. The last one I'll talk about here are the hounds. These are crawling creatures that appear to be a mix of a human and a dog, contorted and crawling. They are quite hostile and dangerous, but can sometimes be intimidated for a short period of time when given direct eye contact. There are tons of other entities you may encounter, but those are some that I saw show up quite a bit. The wiki authors have done a fantastic job compiling all of this information, so I suggest reading into it yourself if it really interests you. Really, this whole video would not be possible without the amazing work of the community over there, so I implore you to check it out, especially if I go over something that particularly piques your interest, because chances are there's a lot you can find out about it on the wiki. It's also probably Probably important to mention the MEG. The specifics of the MEG aren't important, but if you want to go further into it, then you can go find their page on the wiki dot itself. But essentially, this is the SCP foundation of the Backrooms world. It's one of the main factions of people that explore the Backrooms and document it, along with setting up bases and things like that within the Backrooms. The last thing to bring up is Almond Water. So for whatever reason, there really isn't a lot of water in the back rooms, at least any that's non-toxic. And most liquids are incredibly dangerous. Really, the only thing you can trust is almond water, this almondy flavored drink that can be found throughout the back rooms. Not only is it an important source of nutrients and hydration, but also a known cure for diseases and other ailments, including some of the more supernatural stuff that can happen to you down there. So yeah, I don't know why it's almond water, but it's important. Cheers. With the basics down, let's just get into the first 100 levels of the backrooms. Uh, I won't be going over every community, every base, every wanderer, every entity sighting because, number one, this video is going to be long enough as it is. Number two, 
uh, I want you to have something to go into yourself that if you hear uh, one of these levels and it piques your interest, you can actually go and support the author's work by actually going to the page and looking at the full wiki dot thing because there's so much on each and every single one of these levels. And number three, it's not always vitally important every single monster that you can encounter or every single person that's gone through these. Oh, and thank you to Jabberwock for the help on the music in this video. It's a lot of tracks to make, so that was really helpful. Jabberwock has uh, their own backroom series that's going on on their channel that you can find in the description. It's really great and cinematic and I think a really unique take on this. So if you're interested in the backrooms, go check that out as well. With that said, let's get started. This is the meat of the video, so this may get a little bit long. When it comes to the footage in the background, I'll try to make it as relevant as possible or even showing some maps that people have recreated of the specific levels themselves, but I assume that this will eventually taper off because there's so many levels and it'll probably just end up being, you know, general liminal space and backrooms footage. Either way, in the top corner, I'll make sure to include an image of the place that I'm talking about if available. Let's dig into the archive. Level Zero is a non-linear space, resembling the back rooms of a retail outlet. Similar to its previous form, all rooms in Level Zero appear uniform and share superficial features such as yellowed wallpaper, damp carpet, and inconsistently placed fluorescent lighting. However, no two rooms within the level are identical. The installed lighting flickers inconsistently and hums at a constant frequency. This buzzing is notably louder and more obtrusive than ordinary fluorescent humming. An examination of the fixtures to determine the source has been inconclusive. The substance saturated in the carpet cannot be consistently identified. It is not water, nor is it safe to consume. Linear space in level zero is altered drastically. It is possible to walk in a straight line and return to the starting point, and retracing your steps will result in a different set of rooms appearing than the ones that you already passed through. Due to this, the visual similarity between rooms, consistent navigation is extremely difficult. Devices such as compasses and GPS locators fail to function within the level, and radio communications are distorted and unreliable. Level Zero is entirely still and devoid of life. Despite the fact that it is the primary entrance to the back rooms, contact with other wanderers within this level has never been reported. Presumably, a great number of people have died before exiting, the most likely causes being dehydration, starvation, and psychological trauma due to sensory deprivation and isolation. However, no corpses have been reported from these hypothetical deaths. Attempting to enter level zero in a group will result in separation of the group until the level is exited. Hallucinations are common in level zero, the most common being humming from lighting, increasing to a deafening volume, then abruptly silencing, the appearance of doors, the appearance of stairs, acute deja vu, human-like speech resembling no known language, movement and peripheral vision resembling insects crawling underneath the wallpaper, which disappears once the wall is observed directly, and insect-like chittering. According to analysis, the CO2 levels within level zero are rising at a steady rate. The significance of this is unknown. Level 1 is a large, sprawling warehouse that features concrete floors and walls, exposed rebar, and a low-hanging fog with no discernible source. The fog often coalesces into condensation, forming puddles in the floor in inconsistent areas. Unlike Level 0, this level possesses a consistent supply of water and electricity, which allows an indefinite habitation by wanderers, provided that appropriate precautions are taken. It is also far more expansive, possessing staircases, elevators, isolated rooms, and hallways. Crates of supplies appear and disappear randomly within the level, often containing a mixture of vital items, food, almond water, batteries, tarps, weaponry, clothing, and medical supplies, and nonsensical objects, assorted car parts, boxes of crayons, used syringes, partially burned paper, live mice, mice in a catatonic state that has been injected with unknown substances, shoelaces, loose change, bundles of human hair. The crates should be approached with caution due to their contents, but are a valuable resource. In addition, crude paintings and drawings with no apparent origin or meaning appear on the walls and floors. They are known to change in appearance and disappear when not in direct line of sight or when unlit. The light fixtures within level 1 are prone to flicker and fail at inconsistent intervals. When this occurs, supplies are liable to vanish inexplicably, and hostile entities may appear unexpectedly. These entities rarely attack in groups and tend to avoid light and large gatherings of people. It is advised to carry a reliable light source and sleep holding whatever items you do not wish to lose. Level 2 consists mainly of dark, gray, concrete maintenance tunnels stretching on for millions of miles. 
The walls are lined with pipes and occasionally ventilation ducts, which often contain a thick, viscous black liquid. Doors can sometimes be found, but most are locked or lead to dead ends. These rooms typically house shelves with random assortment of objects, occasionally computers. In certain parts of hallways in level 2, the heat can become unbearable, reaching 43 degrees Celsius, or 110 degrees Fahrenheit, or higher. This is usually in areas where the machinery is the loudest, typically at the ends of hallways. The entities found in this level are some of the most dangerous in the back rooms. Noises can be heard from the vents which are caused by crawlers. You can also find Mark in employee bathrooms on level 2. Other beings here include Smilers, Child Facelings, Clumps, Hounds, Male Death Moths, Wretches, Plague, Goblins, Bursters, and Skin Stealers. The only thing you need to know, and can know, is to run away the moment you see one. The entity shown in the picture has not been identified, and the fate of the original photographer is unknown. Level 3 is a series of long, dark, twisting hallways that work similarly to Level 0. They all consist of randomly segmented rooms, which form in no particular pattern, and are extremely loud with the noises of machinery. The hallways are very narrow and enclosed, some even requiring wanderers of average height and build to bend, hunch, crawl, or walk sideways through them. The walls are comprised of dusty, brown bricks, usually covered in segments of copper pipes and mechanical components. The floors are made up of even dustier, grey-tiled floor, while the ceiling is made of entirely from metal. Level 3 is one of the larger levels of the back rooms. Estimated at around 350 million square miles in area, this presumed size makes sighting of fellow wanderers scarce when traveling through Level 3. It is recommended that you enter Level 3 only if you are properly prepared to defend yourself from anything lurking in the hallways with you, as it is highly unlikely that any aid will come to you should you need it. As mentioned, Level 0 and Level 3 share some similarities. The rooms are of similar size and layout, and the hallways of both are long and winding. However, the levels also contain some striking differences. One such example would pertain to the rooms of Level 3 themselves, which sometimes contain objects inside of them that can help differentiate them from other rooms, something which Level 0 lacks. One of the more notable examples of this is that of a set of rusty iron bars captured in image form by the MEG in the initial exploration of the level in 2012. Further tests have demonstrated that no matter what methods were attempted, the bars could never be removed or opened, nor the walls around them. Such obstructions have made it impossible to traverse certain portions of level 3, so the level cannot be fully mapped at present. MEG field explorers have reported that areas where prison bars are numerous tend to instill a heightened sense of fear and extreme discomfort to wanderers. Wanderers often claim to feel as they are being watched, and have even claimed to see strange figures lurking beyond the bars. The MEG has concluded that such phenomena are either results of hallucinations or merely rumors. Level 3 shares many similarities with Level 2, such as the fact that the walls are typically lined with pipes. The pipes are far less abundant than those of Level 2, but can still be found lining the corners of most hallways. The echoes of the viscous black sludge that flows through these pipes is one of the main sources of noise within the level. The sludge in question is highly toxic and emits deadly fumes that can cause the body's damage to the nervous system, if inhaled, as well as second and third degree burns upon direct contact with the skin. All studies attempting to analyze the chemical composition of the sludge have yielded inconclusive results. This in itself poses an obstacle to research on the substance's properties and potential functions. Out of place electrical rooms can also be found randomly throughout the hallways of level 3. These electrical rooms can vary greatly in every single aspect, but the majority of them are extremely dark and contain a single generator. Electrical or electronic appliances such as breaker boxes, computers, loose wires, security camera monitors, and fluorescent lights have also been reported. The abundant machinery within the level causes temperatures within level 3 to be uncomfortably warm but generally bearable, with the average temperature ranging widely from 66 to 93 degrees Fahrenheit. Long distance travel across level 3 is made difficult by regions in which the temperature may rise drastically to become entirely inhospitable, with the highest temperature ever recorded being 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Reports also exist of regions with damp, thick air, which makes the air in areas difficult to breathe. The machinery of level 3 is quite possibly the most dangerous aspect of its ambient environment. The machines found throughout the level operate autonomously without need for external intervention. Wanderers may benefit from the useful machinery or tap into apparently infinite extra normal supply of electricity that's powering them. However, the autonomy of these machines also makes them hazardously volatile. Machines often break down and require regular maintenance, which is dangerous since their power supply cannot be turned off by any means. 
Furthermore, the machines have been known to spontaneously combust or explode on several occasions, causing grievous injury to wanderers unfortunate enough to be in the vicinity. Despite this, the danger of machinery can easily be avoided if one does not act rashly while traversing the level and instead scouts out a safe route. Level 4 resembles an office building, though it is almost completely devoid of furniture. Some rooms in this level have windows, though most of them have been completely blacked out. Any windows that have not been blacked out are considered traps and should be avoided at all costs. Level 4 is mostly devoid of entities. Hounds and dullers are the only ones that have been observed. One person claimed they saw a smiler, but no evidence exists. Because of this lack of beings, there are a lot of people in level 4. Scattered around this level, water coolers, vending machines, and fountains containing almond water can be found. Level 4 is a very easy place to escape to and from. Level 4 is the best place to meet other people and find supplies. Before attempting to move on to the next levels, you should stock up on almond water. You will need it, especially in level 5 and 6. Level 5 is an infinite hotel complex with many rooms and halls. The level itself seems to have been constructed in the 1930s, with furniture dating back to 1920. The surroundings of level 5 are littered with decorations and furniture from the early 20th century, the main hall being the most object populated area of level 5. The level is mostly clean with little dust and dirt lingering on surfaces. It seems to clean itself, as unclean spots seem to disappear only a few minutes later. The oddly pristine floors and well cared for areas make level 5 utterly unsettling compared to the other levels close by. Smooth jazz plays quietly throughout the halls via vintage turntables and vintage speakers hooked up to a sound system throughout the level. The choice of switching music seems to be at random and out of place. It is unknown how this feat is completed. Level 5 is fairly mysterious and infamous for its strange noises that can be heard, such as distant party chatter that can be heard on the other side of walls. People have reported that there is an unseen presence watching them around every corner. Reports had mentioned whispering noises incoherently behind them, something tapping their shoulder when they're alone, and the supposed watching eyes from aged paintings scattered about. Very little is known about the actual structure of level 6, as the level is shrouded in total and complete darkness. Absolutely no light permeates the level, and light sources brought into the level have no function. Navigation of level 6 is carried out by feeling one's way through the darkness, which has revealed that the level is comprised of seemingly endless series of tight hallways made of smooth, cold material, likely concrete. In addition to being permanently dark, level 6 is also eerily silent, akin to a soundproof room. To explore level 6 is to subject oneself to a slow journey through complete darkness, total silence, and utter isolation. As such, most people who have spent more than a few minutes in level 6 have reported feelings of paranoia, dread, anxiety, and rising tension due to the unknowable nature of what may lie in the darkness around them. Several witnesses have also reported occasional auditory hallucinations such as scuttling sounds, breathing, or whispering. Those who have spent extended time in level 6 recall feeling as though they were the only ones unable to see. Level 6 is largely regarded as one of the most dangerous early levels in the back rooms. However, investigations have shown that as of now, no entities have been found on this level. Despite this, few people seem to leave level 6. Level 7 is an impossibly large ocean that seems to stretch infinitely in all directions. Despite the absence of fixed light sources within the level, a dim natural light is present across the level. Detailed exploration of this ocean is sparse due to the extreme danger and amount of preparation it requires to navigate. What we know of level 7 is as follows. Level 7 is largely unexplored, but is understood to be composed of two rooms. The entrance room and the room containing the ocean itself, with a high concrete ceiling suspended above the water. The entrance room appears to be the most readily available point of entry to level 7, being directly at the bottom of the stairs from level 6. This entrance room is the most habitable point in the level, and should be used as a home base for those who dare to explore the ocean below. This room is fully furnished, with a bookcase against the wall containing several books of unknown origin, a small coffee table, a single chair, and a fluorescent ceiling lamp. The carpeted floor is covered with a shallow pool of water, no deeper than a puddle. Across the room from the staircase to level 6 is the doorway to the ocean. Any explorers willing to traverse level 7 should be aware that the center of gravity within the entrance room is different from that of the rest of the level. The entrance rooms appear to be built sideways into the ceiling of level 7, with the door opening directly above the water from a top-down perspective. Anything directly in front of the open doorway will have its gravity forcibly adjusted to that of the ocean, leading to several unfortunate wanderers to plummet through the doorway into the waters below. The vast majority of level 7 is composed of the ocean outside of the entrance. The door to the entrance room is located in a fixed spot on the concrete ceiling, roughly 4.5 meters above the surface of the water. Though the water surrounding the entrance is barren, wanderers traveling far enough across the surface have discovered islands made of unknown rock, 
which are mostly uninhabited. The ocean of level 7 is mostly uncharted, but exploration suggests that the entire level is almost completely devoid of life. Level 8 is made of huge caverns and small cave systems that twist and turn like normal underground systems. Level 8 is very damp, with almond water flowing from the walls and ceiling. Stalactites and stalagmites appear to be very common in level 8. Sounds echo throughout the level, so it is relatively easy to listen for potential danger, or possibly even attract it if not careful. Level 8 is normally devoid of natural light, but light sources from an unknown origin shine on damp walls, making the level slightly glow in select areas. Vegetation, albeit extremely rare, does exist in level 8 in the form of dried vines and small shrubs. Large pools of almond water can also be found around the level, which is not safe to, for consumption due to the large amount of minerals. Some pools that are found are made of a viscous, tar-like substance, the same substance found in level 2 and level 7. Entering the goop will result in groups of humanoid hands covered in tar to reach out and grab the wanderer, dragging them into the pool. Another variant of the pools is one made from distilled water, and entering one will lead the wanderer to level 7. Small veins of ore exist in level 8. This level includes many types of ore minerals such as iron, copper, gold, and more. The MEG have created public travel routes in the safe areas of level 8 for travel for wanderers. Many dangerous entities reside in level 8, that being smilers, skin stealers, wretches, camo crawlers, transporters, male and female death moths, hostile facelings, blossoming eyes, hounds, death rats, paralys, fault crawlers, clumps, watchers, reviooks, wranglers, and rare sightings of stalkers. Oh boy. Level 8 has their own special entity known as the Arachnids of Level 8. These entities are large spiders that are extremely venomous. We advise avoiding these entities at all costs. The entities known as crawlers have been reported due to the vents of level 2 connecting to level 8. The entities known as the frayed are theorized to have been created in level 8 by an unknown group. A strange property of entity 2 is that windows that house them can appear in level 8's cave walls. Due to the danger presented by the entity known as Wranglers, it is highly advised to be aware of their abilities before traversing this level. Above all, if any rumblings are heard or felt, evacuate the area immediately. Level 9 is an infinite suburban area at midnight. This level has darkness similar to that of level 6, although not as dangerous. The houses vary in design and size, and each are completely different, although there are reports of spotting two houses near each other that are exactly the same. The houses of level 9 appear to be furnished and fairly new, although there is no power source for the lighting systems to function. Some houses have a chance of being completely empty. Many useful objects can be found inside of these houses and areas similar to them. The furniture of these houses is what a person would expect for a normal house, such as sofas, televisions, beds, refrigerators, etc. Items that require a power source are not functional. Some of the houses have fully furnished yards at the back of the house. Another anomalous property of this level is that you can find two houses strangely clipped inside of each other when traveling too far, which is physically impossible. The streets of level 9 are the more dangerous area of the level. The wet asphalt roads are unpainted and covered in leaves in some areas. The puddles in some spots of the road indicate that the level had once rained before. The stone sidewalks are normal and don't seem to have any anomalous oddities. Wandering off the walkway into the field will for some reason lead to level 10. The street lamps are usually powered off and are inactive, although some flicker on and off and are sometimes even powered. It is unknown where the power originates from. Be aware of the foggy mist that can appear, due to the fog being the spawning mechanism for the mangled. Level 10 is a wheat field that appears to be of an infinite size. A large unpaved dirt path heading north and south is also present. The wheat in the fields is safe for use and consumption. Pockets of almond water can be found all around the wheat fields, which has a sweet taste. The time of day in level 10 is always around noon. The sky is very cloudy, and rain may occur rarely. When walking down the path, you will not only find wheat fields, but strange objects and buildings in the distance. The first buildings you can encounter are barns and stables. These buildings are usually empty, but are fully explorable. The contents of barns may vary, but hay, animal fur, and animal noises are present throughout the barns and stables. The objects you can find include tractors, farming utilities, etc. Small houses can be found around level 10. These houses seem to be built around the early 1980s, and are quite empty as resources are scarce. Do not enter the houses, as an event will occur where sobbing can be heard emanating from the house, and those present inside will disappear. These houses do, however, possess a chance to bring you to some levels like level 9 and level 7, although this is unconfirmed. Level 11 is a presumably infinite city, populated with buildings, stores, and skyscrapers. 
This level includes buildings that can be found in a typical city in the real world. The interiors of these buildings are randomized in structure and furniture. Some buildings are empty, while others are fully furnished. Certain buildings are accessible, while others are not. The interiors of the buildings are strange and anomalous, as one can find stairways leading to nowhere, doors located on the sides of buildings, etc. The shops, while mainly derelict, occasionally contain useful items. Gravity does not seem to affect these buildings. Some buildings have been reported to be strangely placed on top of one another, floating or even clipping inside each other, which is physically impossible. This level has no daylight cycle and is stuck in daytime, although some levels show level 11 at night, for example level 92. The concrete sidewalks are mostly normal, but the sidewalks can rarely lead to a dead end or clip through buildings. Some walkways just lead up towards the sky like a ramp. The asphalt roads of level 11 are warm and dry, the opposite of level 9. The roads are painted similar to casual roads with yellow lines. The street lamps are anomalous as some lamps are on, some are off. Almond water is a common item in level 11, ranging from water fountains, commercial freezers, soda machines, and more. There is a strange event that can occur where a random model of car will roll across the street until eventually it stops rolling. These vehicles are inactive and do not work. The cars are usually empty, although there have been reports of facelings either by themselves or up to groups of four inside the vehicles after the event has taken place. Level 11 has large nuclear power plants that are usually separated about 800 kilometers from each other. Studies of the power plants show that they are inactive, yet still emit dangerous levels of radiation. So much so that drones flying over the area for surveillance deactivate from the emissions. We advise wanderers to keep away from those structures until further studies continue. Level 11 has many city landmarks from all over the real world. These landmarks can be recognized as structures from New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, St. Louis, Toronto, and more. These structures have the same properties as the rest of the buildings in Level 11 mentioned previously. Wi-Fi in Level 11 does, in fact, exist and is active. The names of these connections are very random with no corresponding patterns. Level 12 appears to possess a simple effect not shared by any known level, in that it censors itself. Any attempt to record or photograph Level 12 will result in either a simple white image or a mass of noise and TV static. When uploaded to another device, footage of Level 12 will convert into a standard SMPTE testing screen, lacking any color. It is unknown why or how this change occurs. Any information included with the footage or image data, such as a file name, is also censored. Level 12's environment is by far one of the most basic. A small, brightly lit, white painted room containing nothing more than a table and a chair, as well as an adjacent locked door. Many wanderers report having entered and successfully escaped the level, though the exact method by which this is achieved is unknown and rarely remembered by survivors. As of yet, no Level 12 entity sightings have been appended to the MEG database. Level 13 is seemingly an apartment building with an extremely high number of floors. Within each floor, there are many small residences, each with a number on the door. These numbers are in a system where it lists the floor, the section of the floor, and the apartment number. The current design of the building is similar to that of a typical 1980s architecture. The walls in the hallway are white, and the carpet is of a brown geometrical design. This design is consistent throughout all floors. The main source of transport between the floors on this level are stairways that are located on each floor. These are the main areas of intra-level transport due to the fact that all the elevators will take you to other levels, not transporting you through level 13. Another prominent entity on this level are windows. These will usually show a bright blue void on the exterior of them, and they are less hostile on this level. However, these windows are still very dangerous, so be sure to avoid them. Level 14 is an oasis. The forest from your dreams shimmering in the night. Close your eyes for a moment. You can see it, right? The crashing waterfalls, the crimson grass, wet with dew, the eternally starlit sky. Even the branches on the trees reach up as if trying to touch it. You can hear the forest whispering to you. You'll be happy here, I'm sure of it. After all, everyone else is. And why should you feel down when others are so content? A cacophony fills your ears. You can't think, but you don't need to. Aren't you relieved to have the burden of thought lifted from your shoulders? Don't you feel so much lighter now? You can almost float away. Perhaps you will. Look at the other guests lying peacefully in the soil, devoid of all pain as they meditate, their bones glistening in the moonlight. Don't you want to be like them? You're so close now, you can almost touch it. 
Level 15 is a series of futuristic hallways with occasional pitch black areas created by the absence of any lighting. Sounds of engines can be heard from afar when traversing through these hallways. These noises are coming from machines that are located in rooms closed off by reinforced doors made out of metal. A part of the wall of these rooms is made of thick glass. These machines range from the size of a laptop to unmeasurable dimensions, and the noises they emit don't seem to be affected by their size. Some machines have clear tasks, which are easy to notice, like producing steel rods, but most of them don't seem to have one, with some not having any real-life equivalent whatsoever. Rarely, one may stumble upon a room that contains machines that have been destroyed, machines which appear to have either exploded or broken due to unknown reasons. It can be theorized that the cause of these explosions is the lack of maintenance since nothing seems to be preventing them from breaking down. The glass on the wall of these rooms appears to have been shattered, but not broken, indicating that it may be composed similarly to laminated glass. This level is thought to be infinite, however this is only an assumption made since it might be simply too large for a proper measurement to be made. The rooms and hallways are made out of a white or grey concrete, with beams of white steel lining up against the walls and ceilings. Long symbols can be found inscribed on the beams. These appear to have only a design purpose. Large lights on the walls, ceilings, or ground give an eerie glow to these empty hallways. The only thing that's breaking this color scheme is dried out blood and bodily fluids that can be found alongside corpses present throughout the level. These corpses seem human, but the manpower inside the level doesn't allow for proper dissection, identification, or removal of these corpses. They are dressed in lab coats, and the causes of death seem to be from violent fights using different kinds of weapons. Makeshift knives and spears can be found alongside some of these corpses, but no firearms have yet been discovered, even though some bodies show clear signs of gunshot wounds. Despite the absence of bugs to help with the decomposition process, the corpses seem to have lost enough water to indicate that they may have been there for several months, or even years. No entities have yet been discovered inside this level, however, numerous corpses of hounds were found piled in a room that seemed to have been used to cremate a large number of unidentified objects. Level 16 is a heavy rainforest system similar to those outside of the back rooms. One key difference is that the ground Level 16 in its current state is an arctic climate similar to those within standard reality. One notable difference is the ice covering the surrounding area has a notably luminous surface with high reflectivity. What makes this level especially interesting is that it seems to change drastically, and it's not exactly understood how, when, why, or what the process is. At this point, any description of the level is likely inaccurate, as it may have changed already. Level 17 appears to be an infinite labyrinth of the inside structure of a naval aircraft carrier. The level is made up of corridors and stairwells typically found on an Essex-class carrier. Occasionally, one may come across a flooded hallway. These hallways are one-way exits connected directly to the surface rooms of level 7. Level 17 is mostly devoid of entities, having only a single entity exclusive to it. These entities, known as imprints, are doppelgangers of past wanderers who have explored level 17. While not physically dangerous, looking at an imprint will cause a great amount of stress for unknown reasons. This effect is amplified when looking one of the entities in the eyes, typically resulting in the wanderer falling unconscious for 3-4 to four hours, and in extreme cases can lead to brain death. Heading up several flights of stairs will eventually bring you to the upper layers of level 17. These upper floors have sealed translucent windows and doors with an unidentifiable light emitting from them. When the light emitted from the windows comes into contact with a wanderer, it causes said wanderer's lungs to slowly fill with water. Water will continue to fill the wanderer's lungs until they are either removed from the light or the wanderer dies, whichever comes first. Level 18 appears different to every viewer, however, every viewer has noted it to be similar to a childhood memory. The age range of this childhood memory ranges from 2 to 5 years old. The most common appearance it can undertake is a preschool or daycare. However, in cases where neither are present, it resembles things such as a childhood bedroom, classroom, or playground. In very rare cases where the wanderer in question had no such memories, the room will resemble an empty void will, and will not affect the wanderer. Level 18 has numerous voices whispering while you're wandering. These voices can whisper a variety of things, however, the most common things it'll whisper are your biggest regrets or biggest mistakes. It is unknown how the room gains knowledge of these events, and as such, it is nearly impossible to suppress these voices. Level 18 is also capable of resurfacing deep-seated memories, which are forgotten. For example, dead childhood animals can be found and will often cause the wanderer to enter a deep emotional state, even if they have no memory of the animal. Allergies are suppressed through unknown means. 
Level 18 has been known to be addicting to certain wanderers, and some actively choose to stay in this level. There is no harm posed in this, and the levels provide all materials required for survival. The level itself has no threats around and is known to enjoy company. In level 18, a rare entity can be found, which helps guide wanderers through the floor. This entity is called the plush dino and resembles a dinosaur plushie. The plushie is sapient and capable of movement. Throughout the floor, it can be seen wandering around. Level 19 has a fantastic set of revisions built into the document that I suggest you read. But the main description is that level 19 is a complex series of randomly shaped attic spaces packed with heavy clutter of boxes, vintage furniture, and other miscellaneous items. While the exterior of these items are frequently found damp, dust covered, and dirty, the interiors of these items will more often than not be near pristine in condition. The boxes within level 19 often contain vital food and a wide amount of cataloged anomalous objects. Upon an item being removed from a container, there is a possibility it will begin to decay at a rapid rate. This decay affects more than just inanimate objects, however. A select amount of individuals may feel effects of nausea, paranoia, general dizziness, and may be subject to periods of blacking out or hallucinations. It is currently unknown if this extends to physical decay. Within some of the floorboards of level 19, a warm firelight glow may emanate from underneath, shining up through the flooring. This glow has an odd, alluring effect that can attract wanderers by instilling a feeling of comfort and tranquility, oftentimes pulling direct memories from the individual and altering them to be directly connected to this glow. Level 20 appears to be reminiscent of some of the earlier floors of the back rooms, being a warehouse-like location that is approximately 200 to 300 kilometers wide in total, although more may exist but has yet to be reached. Within most rooms being around 30 meters across and corridors ranging from 10 meters to 300 meters. When it comes to the rooms of level 20, they are primarily filled with abandoned machinery of various eras. Interestingly, despite whatever condition said machinery is in, it appears to work as intended. Along with this, a sticky, oil-like substance coats most of the rooms, usually either being in pools on the floor or leaking from cracks in the roof. Interspersed between rooms are corridors filled with boxes, crates, and racks of all kinds, obscuring most, if not every, wall usually leaving a straight but narrow path between rooms to walk through. Attempting to open items within the corridors is not recommended, as they usually contain odd or outright dangerous items. If any bottles of fluids are found, regardless of brand, they will always contain the fluid found throughout the rest of the floor. Level 21 is a large level consisting of four hallways. These hallways are estimated to be about 26 miles long. The hallways meet in the middle of the level. The middle of the level is a small open square with chairs and a desk. Entities never appear in this area, but instead appear in the hallways. The hallways are assumed to be ever-changing, shifting and shaping into something new every once in a while. The hallways can become impossible to navigate or be blocked off. Although these halls are always odd, there is one constant. The doors that repeat on either side of the walls are always there. These doors can lead to random places in the back rooms, including negative and sub-levels. More often than not, they will cause you to appear somewhere else in level 21. The hallways in this level are extremely dangerous, and can sometimes be filled with entities. The amount of entities and types are inconsistent, although clickers are relatively common here. Unknown entities have been spotted at this level as well. Random objects can also be found in the halls. These include almond water, level keys, and fire salt. Others have been spotted rarely. If anybody is found at this level, they are not to be trusted. Avoid contact with them at all costs. It is rumored that there is a door at the end of one hallway that causes the hallway to extend for much longer than usual. This door has not been found, but has been said to have valuable resources and many aggressive entities. If this door is found, do not enter it. It is to be reported to the MEG. Level 22 was initially nothing special. It took the appearance of a 20th century multi-story car park, which was filled with various parked cars and shopping carts, all of which were used to be full of building supplies and food. Due to the infrequent amount of hostile entities in Level 22, this location acted as a hub for countless groups and individual communities. In 1987, Level 22 was declared a small micronation, becoming independent of any other faction within the levels of the backrooms. From then on, the micronation within Level 22 continued to grow rapidly. By 1999, most entrances to Level 22 had been closed by its inhabitants, and this group officially isolated itself and gave itself the new title of M-Stable. While M-Stable began negotiating trades with both the 
MEG and the BNTG in 2012 and 2015 respectively, this independent faction would very rarely allow those who were not a part of their group into the level. Because of this, very little is known about the faction's members, economy, political structure, or general day-to-day -day life. From the few studies that were done, the community had a rigid caste system that divided inhabitants into families. These different groups would each work on different floors of level 22. Each group would have a variety of tasks to fulfill, with each one giving a fraction of their total resources produced to the floor above, keeping whatever was left for themselves. While it was unknown who founded Emstable, it is known that three individuals were flagships of the Empire's creation. They, as well as others, lived in the highest floor of level 22. Sporting a surprisingly lavish lifestyle given the conditions and environment, they were also known to have Wi-Fi, leisurely devices like a pool and football table, and were somehow able to set up functioning electronic cookers for meal prepping. For the lower floors, however, life was a lot more difficult. Floors that were around 10 to 15 stories from the top enjoyed easy, albeit boring lives. All residents on these floors had tents, shacks made of wood or mined concrete, as well as a select few residents possessing cooking appliances like the ones on the top floor. At the bottom of the Emstable's empire, below the 16th floor, life was extremely impoverished and hard. Recovered diaries and notes write about how many would flee down even more floors in hopes of going to another level. This system was inevitably exploited by the higher floors of level 22, demanding more from the lower floors while giving less to those above. This led to the need for the third party trade deals. These deals were ultimately unable to save Emstable from its collapse, which prompted the majority of its population to leave the level in search of a better life in other levels. Today, level 22 resembles an abandoned and destroyed car park. The ground is littered with rubble and girder poles, creating an extremely unsafe walking ground. Level 23, otherwise known as the Petrified Garden, is a massive planetoid-sized superorganism comprised primarily of several intertwining tree specimens resembling those found in the front rooms. Uh, the front rooms are the real world, I'll just call it Earth. Despite having gravitational pull extremely similar to that of Earth's, the MEG estimate that the surface area of level 23 is approximately the same as the dwarf planet Ceres. Travel throughout the level is possible due to pockets of air and winding tunnels inside the level surface, similar to large cave systems. The surface of level 23 is an extremely dense forest that lets little to no light through. There is no night or day cycle on this level. A star is visible in the sky above the surface canopy, but never changes from its position, even when traversing through the surface of the planet. The MEG has determined that the entire planetoid is permanently bathed in sunlight from all directions. The trees that comprise level 23 are extremely varied. Their Earth counterparts come from all different types of habitats. Some of the most common trees in level 23 are Douglas firs, aspens, mahoganies, redwoods, cedars, cypresses, and white oaks, although many trees are exotic, endangered, or even extinct in Earth. In addition, several trees have been seen that cannot be identified by any known species of tree from regular reality. Level 24 takes the form of a plastic moon model attached to several other plastic planets with an LED model sun in the center, all of which are completely up to scale according to those who have entered this level. The moon, which is the only accessible planet, has an estimated surface area of 14.6 million square miles. Surprisingly, none of the planets have any gravitational pull to each other, but gravity still works the same when traversing the moon. You won't be able to moon jump, for example. The planets are all connected with metal wires and slowly spin around. The area surrounding the massive tabletop solar system model due to its size is astronomically blurry and hard to see. However, it seems to be a massive, dimly lit Victorian era study room. It is undetermined if wanderers who enter the level are shrunken down or if the level itself is simply far larger in comparison to a normal human. While this should be impossible, it is possible to see level 24 from other levels that have a day and night cycle or a moon. They describe the same shade of gray and blue that the moon has. Level 25 is mostly comprised of large echoey rooms that are often filled with arcade machines. These rooms are coated with a constant yet thin layer of dust on the floor, as well as the various ledges or shelves that can oftentimes be found nailed into the wall, often maroon painted walls. Interspersed within the gaming rooms of level 25, wanderers will often locate smaller, less inviting hallways. These back scene areas will often be empty, though have been known to infrequently contain boxes or old, long unsteamed and freezing boilers, the latter of which often contains the usual expected backroom supplies such as almond water or general snack based foods. While the entirety of level 25 is yet to be fully explored, similar to almost all documented levels, level 25's rough length and width have been estimated to be some 8.5 miles from north to south and about 9.2 miles wide from east to west. Level 26 is a finite level that expands over millions of kilometers. This level is reminiscent of a typical urban household. It can be described as similar to level zero. 
Many segmented rooms can be found along with confusing architecture. This includes random doorways, stairways, and hallways that lead nowhere, doors that lead into walls, and many others. Some hallways are very compact and dangerous to go down. Houses seem to be stitched together. Other things such as furniture can sometimes be no-clipped through and lead to negative levels with stairways that can lead to the basement. Windows can sometimes not be entity too, and can be opened into an outside. This outside area looks like the real world, except for a blue mist that is always present. This mist is not toxic, however, it will eventually melt eyes. Uh huh? Level 27, also known as the Bunker Springs, is a relatively small and peaceful level completely devoid of entities. The level appears to be infinite, with the only accessible part being the approximately 200 square feet hot spring that houses all entrances and all but one exit. The water in this hot spring is potable and mineral rich. Wanderers who have drunk the water in level 27 report feeling clear headedness and heightened energy. The temperature of this water averages around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, similar in temperature to a common hot tub. From the walls of the cave, there are two openings and two small waterfalls that deposit new water into the spring. The small pool is drained by means of a small tunnel near the corner of the cave, which is too small for humans to physically crawl through. Do not attempt to explore it. It is unknown where this water goes and comes from, but the source appears to be infinite. Level 27 is an extremely popular level among those who reside in levels such as 11 to its easily accessible and constant exit and entrance. If you decide to visit level 27, please be respectful of any other wanderers you may encounter bathing in the springs. The waters of the hot spring have been proven to have beneficial effects on wanderers who bathe for at least an hour in it. Wanderers have consistently reported feeling less stressed, calmer, and more optimistic than before. The waters also are known to help alleviate minor physical ailments such as soreness, bruises, rashes, acne, and small cuts. It is not recommended, however, to bathe for more than two hours, as prolonged exposure to hot waters may result in dizziness and nausea. Despite the natural warm temperatures of the water and the humid air, there is absolutely no vegetation or even living beings of any kind anywhere in level 27. The level is even devoid of bacterial organisms. It is unknown why this is the case. I had the misfortune of finding out why. You thought this level was just going to be a simple, happy little spring, right? A little spark of hope and safety in this terrible place we call the back rooms? Thousands of people thought that was the case. I thought that was the case. They still use this level to this day to unwind from their otherwise stressful lives. It's blissful. It's peaceful. It's beautiful. That illusion was destroyed for me. I'll never visit this level again. But it's still safe to enter. It'll still be your lovely, cute hot spring as long as you don't read on. But I know who you are. You're a wanderer. You're curious by default. That's the very nature of our poor souls. So if you really want to know what this level is, I'll show you my discovery. Don't say I didn't warn you. And if you want to find out more about that, you can go to the backrooms-wiki.wiki.com forward slash level dash 27. <laughs> level 28, known for its only distinguishing landmark, Stormstone Keep, is a level that closely resembles the Earth with a few major differences. Any wanderer no clipping into level 28 will fall at the foot of the keep and immediately notice that the sky is a deep indigo blue. The sky is devoid of both the sun and moon, and the entirety of the level is lit from above by an unknown light source. The ground is tinted a very dark blue, and thus it is recommended to bring a source of light when traversing this level. There is no day or night cycle. Clouds sweep past the enigmatic sky, but it never rains. The area roughly five miles from the keep is the safe zone, where it is highly recommended that any wanderers do not leave for more than 30 minutes at a time under any circumstances. Stormstone Keep is the dilapidated ruins of what seems to be a European medieval castle. It is located on a large hill in the center of the forest valley. Many of the flora on this level are extremely similar to flora on Earth, but upon further inspection, all plants on this level are found to be significantly more flammable than Earth flora. Each plant also has varying levels of blue pigmentation. The reason for this is unknown. It is not recommended to move plants from level 28 as they do not seem to grow back. Upon burning a plant from level 28, it will emit a blue smoke that is toxic to inhale. Do not use objects such as matches, cigarettes, or torches as it is possible to start a wildfire. The valley is surrounded on all sides by impossibly tall and narrow mountains that seem to defy the laws of physics. It is impossible to see the tops of them as they are permanently covered by clouds and a blue-gray mist. These mountains are more than 10 miles away from Stormstone Keep and therefore out of the safe zone, so they remain unexplored and highly dangerous. Hidden on the vast oceans of outer level 29, our island stands, and within it, a new civilization embraces a new future. The island itself is delimited by rock cliffs and sharp, steep slopes of rock and metal, which act as a natural barrier against outside dangers. 
On the inside, tall and robust arrays of mountains protect those living within the island and also act as a fresh source of almond water, which flows off the mountainside and form long and wide rivers. Between the mountains, small settlements surrounded by large farms dominate the landscape and form a beautiful array of crop fields. Small huts located between them produce a stable income of food for the small towns. Anything ahead of the boundaries of our island is deemed a dead zone for it is both unsafe, risky, and lethal to venture through. The areas outside of the island are deemed too dangerous for anyone to traverse through, and commonly, sightings of strange and enormous entities are reported. So does the ocean itself act as a barrier and a threat due to its anomalous properties, which can, at worst, destroy entire vessels and break apart even the strongest boats made by our people. Unfortunately, the only way to exit the level is also by traversing through this vast ocean, which was proven by wanderers in the past before the waters became a danger to us. Given that the entire population of the level is stuck forever in here, many have devoted their lives to creating a steady, firm, and strong foundation for a new, glorious, and thriving civilization in the back rooms. Level 30 resembles a large daytime skybox with clusters of islands inside. The islands are around 2,000 square miles in size and 100,000 square miles apart from each other. These islands are always flat, with a thin grass surface above and some stone and rock below. An odd function within this level is its memory-altering abilities, making people imagine the entire level like a dream. How this occurs is when one interacts with a memory lurker. Memory lurkers are small, squid-like entities that fly around the skybox frequently, often lurking around islands. When a wanderer interacts with a memory lurker, the entity will grab the wanderer's head and take full control of the brain. Then, it will turn the wanderer's surroundings into what the memory lurker wants them to be, which usually varies. Level 31 is a 90s style roller rink that loops rather than goes on and on compared to other levels. The level can only be accessed through a door in level 2, level 3, level 27, and rarely level 6. The area most explorers end up in is the roller rink area of the level, the arcade being rarer. The roller rink section is the largest and safest part, although this level is still generally safe, the only entities being hounds, facelings, and the entity native to this level known as the coach. Muffled radio pop songs can be heard playing in the area, and the DJ station at the base of the rink can occasionally be seen having a docile faceling sitting inside selecting the songs. Other sounds, such as the sounds of skates hitting the wood floor and the rink and laughter can be heard. The scent of cheap pizza and soda pop radiates from the direction facing the food court. Traveling towards the scent of pizza and soda will result in entering the food court, a small section of a dining area, typical cheap roller rink food, which is safe to eat. The food court's sole entity is a faceling wearing an employee uniform with a blank name tag. The entity is docile and will serve food and almond water for free if asked. The arcade resembles that of the arcade in level 40, with similar sounds, visuals, and sensations. The coach can be found here, but is typically spotted at the skate rental section. The coach is a faceling that is incredibly complex and intelligent, appearing as a faceless brown-haired man in a striped coach's uniform. He is friendly and incredibly smart, and will offer roller skating lessons. Level 32 is an ever-dark forest that stretches out infinitely under the eyeless gaze of a crescent moon in a starless sky. Hanging from the trees that make up the level are a number of skeletons, their pale bones shining under the moonlight, clattering in the wind. Some say they can hear the skeletons speak. Sometimes they speak of their former lives or prophecies yet to come. Or perhaps it's simply the wind whistling through our skulls, creating the illusion that life still exists beyond their dead eyes. Aside from the skeletons, only one single entity roams the level, one being in two forms. Her first form is that of the Belle, a pale woman with black hair who appears in a long, orange Victorian dress and skeletal face paint. The Belle does not speak, but she beckons wanderers to follow her like a siren luring its prey. If wanderers chase after her until they lose sight of her, they will quickly run into her other form, the Skeleton Queen. The Skeleton Queen is a tall skeletal figure who wears a tattered black dress. She is a powerful creature and seems to have almost complete control over her domain. If you treat her with respect, then she may let you go, but if you do not, she will command the trees to rip you limb from limb in a second. Or worse, she may toy with you, letting you run, letting you think you have a chance to escape until you can't run any longer, and she forces the ground itself to swallow you up, leaving not a single bone in your wake. Level 33 seems to be an empty shopping mall. Most of the stores are owned by major corporations from the real world, but are usually have few products in stock or are completely empty. Some stores are closed off by a gate that is currently has no way to open. More often than not, the food courts will be empty, but there's a chance that you can come across a food court or store that has a full stock. 
When you first enter, there's a very low chance you'll encounter a hound duller or a few death rats or even a skin stealer. But as you go a dozen miles into the store, the entities, as well as new ones, will start appearing more often. The mall will progressively become more worn down the further you travel. Water will begin appearing to flood the level, the lights will flicker to the point where they simply won't turn on anymore, and the effect of your mental state will begin getting worse as the mall starts to have mold, plants grow over, and metal starts to corrode. Level 34 is a small tunnel with only 4 feet between the ceiling and floor. Watch out as you may accidentally fall into the water and into level negative 2. This level has no internal light, so it is extremely recommended to bring a lantern or flashlight. There have been many people that have been in this level. There are many entities on this level, like Smilers. If you see one down a tunnel, it is recommended that you turn your flashlight off immediately, look down, and wait until you think the Smiler is gone. If you think the Smiler is gone, then the Smiler is gone. There are a few hounds here, and there are a lot of death rats roaming the tight spaces. One woman has claimed to see a skin stealer in this level, but there is no evidence to support this. It is recommended you bring almond water from different levels, since the almond water from this level is contaminated. This level is surrounded by a dark abyss which must be avoided. It is a massive parking garage with typical warm lights as well as colored green and blue lights which shine somewhat dimly. This complex has six floors, including a roof. Strangely enough, this level is not infinite, and there are walls along the perimeter the size of a typical car park. Rarely a car can be spotted. Entering these vehicles results in varying effects. Exits are common in this level, however they should be avoided at all costs. Upon approaching one, the complex fills with cars. If this does happen, the best course of action is either to proceed through the exit or escape to the next level by climbing onto one of the cars and running as fast as possible across the cars to a staircase. Passing in front of or behind the vehicles results in it quickly accelerating. That car will continue to hit and run you over until death. Level 36 appears to be an empty airport terminal. Every gate has an airplane and has many real-life businesses. At these businesses, the vending machines only produce almond water. This is the perfect time to stock up on almond water. If you use a cell phone to look up your location, it will tell you that you are in Houston, Texas. Regarding the gates, they all have real-life airliners. Going through the gates will lead to other levels in the back rooms. At a frontier gate, a random entity may walk out of the gate and come for you. The only way to avoid them is to either outrun them or fight them off. Level 37 seems to be an infinite jungle with many trees and fruits which are safe for consumption. The sky on this level is mostly an unnatural purple color, but can be seen to change to a sky blue or a lime green hue. There seems to be a dirt path that splits in multiple directions at a time. If you trail off the path, then it will lead you to an uncharted jungle areas which are very dangerous. If you go in one of the directions on any junction, it will always lead to the same places. The rest of the jungle seems very glitchy, with random buildings and rooms appearing far away from the main path. The buildings are mostly structured in physics breaking ways which are not possible. Level 38 is an amalgamation of all regular levels that fall above level 38. It is believed to be a point where all levels throughout level 0 to level 37 fold in on each other. The cause of this folding is due to the fact that various levels of the backrooms follow no definitive structure, meaning levels fold over each other to create entrances and exits in certain sections of these levels end up overlapping and existing inside one conjoined area. As well as having all the physical properties of the previous 38 levels, level 38 also shares some of the effects as all previous 38 levels. These include the intense darkness found in level 6, the intense mold found in level 28, and decay found in the outer sections of level 33. Level 39 is a series of twisting dirt paths with an expansive oak forest covering both sides. This level is finite, spanning an approximate 300 kilometers across in a circular shape. Level 39 does not have any day-night cycle and is instead stuck in a constant state of late dusk. The temperature of this level varies between 20 degrees and 23 degrees Celsius. The paths of level 39 randomly twist and curve, sometimes forming ineffective loops and curls. This feature of the level makes wanderers easily lose their sense of direction. The paths within level 39 are usually 2 meters wide. The oak trees of level 39 have been observed to be immovable and indestructible. After further examination, it was confirmed that every single tree is not alive, and it's instead an inseparable part of the level, since their roots gradually progress and fuse into the ground of it. The level surface is covered in fallen leaves, dried oak twigs, moss, and somewhat rarely, gravel. Tiny, edible mushrooms can sometimes be spotted in small layers of grass. This level has a few ponds, though they are usually no wider than 5 meters, and no deeper than half a meter. 
Level 39 is relatively hilly, with hills having steep inclines of 5 degrees to 70 degrees, which makes it so that some parts of the level are hard to access without proper equipment. Wanderers who have visited Level 39 state that it felt unnaturally calming to them. Most of them also stated that they experienced an intense feeling of comforting nostalgia, even though they had never seen the level or anything similar to it up until entering. Much like Level 14, the environment of Level 39 seems to hypnotize the Wanderer, making them stay for prolonged periods of time. In most cases, this leads Wanderers to spend an unhealthy amount of time inside of Level 39, which leads many there to die from dehydration or starvation. It has also been discovered that the effects are much stronger near the center of this level, and are nearly powerless near the borders. Luckily, this effect can be nullified by taking a sip of almond water. Seeing as the hypnotizing effects of the level are easily avoidable, water and food are accessible, and no entities are present in the level, Level 39 holds potential for long-term habitation. Level 40 resembles a mid to late 80s arcade with various games and media you would expect in that time period. From the many signs placed around level 40, it seems to be called Roller Rock and Pizza. The level itself holds some intricate designs and patterns on numerous surfaces such as dark blue neon carpet flooring and concrete walls, both of which are covered in graphics of planets and stars, which resemble a flow with a few spaceships and spacemen. Vending machines and other food dispensers are present within level 40, containing a selection of various snacks and other consumables. Although almond water hasn't been seen within the level, the quality of the food seems to be fairly fresh and safe to consume. However, such food is covered in a dressing known as General Starfell's Universal Sauce. The sauce itself has a lime green glow and contains many shiny star-like specks. Current advertisements shown within Level 40 from posters and TV commercials claim the sauce can imitate the taste of any food product, hence the name Universal. This substance is undergoing research at the current moment due to the fact that countless people who have consumed it seem to believe that they are a space cadet in General Starflare's Space Corps. More info will be released soon. In the meantime, we advise not to make any attempts to try this special sauce. The rest of the level includes many arcade machines with various games from the 80s era. All are functional and mostly playable, unlike versions of the arcade machines in level 25. Some arcade games contained within the level 40 are not present in our regular reality, and some appear to be nameless with random objectives. Multiple arcade cabinets are seemingly being used by a strange force referenced as the customers. This force seems to be intelligent while playing the various arcade games completing the tasks that the games are programmed with. Some were even able to cheat using different kinds of bugs and exploits. When a wanderer tries to make contact with an arcade machine in use by the customers, the wanderer will feel woozy before passing out for a few hours. Wanderers then reawaken within level 40 seemingly fine. It is not suggested to interact with the arcade machines that are in use. Some of these arcade machines are being used by facelings that possess the level 11 effect. Interacting with them won't cause any harm, but is still not suggested. If venturing far enough, you reach a bowling alley. This bowling alley has the same aesthetic as the rest of level 40. The alleys themselves work as intended and can be played normally. The leaderboards of such games will show multiple users with random amounts of random numbers and letters. Some flow off the screen due to the names being very long. Traveling further will bring one to either more parts of the arcade halls or a small office-like hallway containing two bathrooms and an employees-only section, which is contained behind a wooden door. The bathrooms work as normal and the wooden door can lead to level zero or a small break room. The furthest area is an exit hall with a revolving door. Entering this door will lead to either level nine, level 10, or level 11, depending on where you grow up on earth. It is unknown if there are any more levels contained within this exit. A small reception desk can be found when wandering level 40. A tall and elongated human entity is found there known as Pat. This entity is safe and enjoys conversation with people. He wears a small baseball cap and a light blue employee's buttoned up shirt. Even though his speech is fairly slow, he is very intelligent. He has four arms and he uses them to do multiple tasks. Level 41 is a rather dark level that resembles a sewage system with ceaseless whale-like noises. Black amphibian-like humanoid entities lurk in the waters and can be hostile if approached depending on the location. In most areas, the level is poorly lit, thus it is encouraged to bring a light source. It has been recorded that the lights may turn off for hours at a time, and during this time, smilers may appear. The rooms will change completely when left alone, so one cannot enter the same room after leaving it. There are no two rooms that look alike in this level. It's impossible to re-enter the same room once it's been exited. Most of the rooms are flooded, with some recorded to be as high as waist level, making the level even harder to navigate. Level 42 is a large, non-Euclidean stretch of land dominated by dense forests, thick vegetation, and one singular volcano in the center. Most of the level consists of nothing more than a gigantic forest with trees covering every bit of the land until the very end of the horizon, which prevents almost any light from reaching the ground. However, even with the absence of light, 
which is vital for plants to survive. These plants are able to grow and perform any function with no apparent diminished effects. Surveying the level has proven to be a challenge for most exploration teams, mostly due to the fact that most of the level is an environmental hazard to any wanderer or entity alike. Traversing the level on foot is the only viable option for those who are looking to explore the level, as the terrain is rough and uneven at all times, even in the seemingly open flat areas underneath giant domes of leaves formed by enormous trees. Furthermore, it is incredibly hard to see without any form of artificial lighting, such as a flashlight. Bringing any fire-inducing sources of light is not recommended due to the pollution and highly reactive atmosphere, which reacts to any modest amount of fire. Acid rains occur frequently and last long periods of time. Time itself is non-linear in level 42, and all clocks brought into the level will cease functioning. The acid is highly corrosive and will damage any wanderer or entity that makes contact with it. Most trees will not offer sturdy protection against these acid rains, even if the coverage is total. Small caves and areas underneath a solid layer of protection, such as an area underneath the cliff, are the most recommended places to wait through the acid rain. At ground level, temperatures are relatively low, with numbers around 0 degrees Celsius to 8 degrees Celsius. Wanderers are prone to suffering from hyperthermia if not adequately protected by dry layers of clothing. At the atmosphere level, however, temperatures can get dangerously high. This is due to the numerous chemical reactions in the atmosphere at any given time time, which itself is enough to warm up most of the air above the forest. Together with the chemical reactions, the volcano present in the middle of the level, which is live at all times, also contributes to these warm temperatures at the atmosphere level, with numbers around 56 degrees Celsius to 67 degrees Celsius. Level 43 seems to be an infinite aquarium theme park. The park itself is very empty and quiet besides their rare occasion of boat noises. No life can be seen and has a lingering ominous effect. Some of the rides and attractions are broken and dysfunctional. A female voice will repeat sentences on the comms and loudspeakers such as, The park is closed, please come back another day. The first area you will encounter is the park area. This area is pure daylight and has many sidewalks that can lead to nowhere. After a while of wandering around, two to four days, you will reach what appears to be the park in its normal state. The normal state of the park is still abandoned and broken, although all the sidewalks are now accurate and lead to the right path. Many attractions lay waste across the grass fields, although some are still standing. The center of this park is a large dome-like building that houses the aquatic life. The second area is inside the main building itself. Inside this said building are many food courts and aquariums, all with different species of sea life, and some undiscovered. All the power in this area is inactive, although it is unknown what is running the aquariums. The waters in said aquariums have been tested and studies have shown the water is both salt water and almond water. The staff halls area is a series of stone brick hallways with pipes on the walls and orange dim lights. Throughout the halls you may find rooms with an office-like equipment inside the room. Many of these include desks and computers which all but for a few seem to be broken. The computers that are functional all contain messages and data containing aquatic research and business conversations. One anomaly is that these computer systems all contain a file present in each device. The file itself is called newvideo.avi and is mostly corrupted. The content shown in this video seem to be a human being running around the hall screaming as a flow of water follows behind. The feed cuts out when the recording device is submerged and an entity known as the fish creature swims up to the device. The viewing of this video is prohibited and you must not start the video. Doing so will send a wave of water flooding the halls and the wanderers within. This area will cause an effect on the human body which makes the wanderer able to breathe inside the water. The area structure itself is now a mixture of all the previous areas in one that are connected in impossible ways. The surrounding objects and barriers are no longer solid, and you will now be able to float through them as if non-existent. This area is very dangerous and it is advised to exit immediately. Level 44 resembles a desolate and empty retail outlet with partially functional lights permeating the level. These lights are presumed to be electrically powered as they do not produce a distinct fluorescent hum. However, they are often reported to be emitting a subtle electrical buzz. Windows are commonly observed near darker locations and are considered safe and have no reported effects when in close proximity. All active windows in level 44 display moving images of regular reality, though it can't be determined if it's precisely synchronized with reality. Attempted verbal and nonverbal communication through these windows has been unsuccessful. This level is classified to be a non-Euclidean space, causing navigation and backtracking to be impractical. The effects of non-linearity in the level have been seen to get worse with proportion to the distance away from the commencing position. It has been shown to be exceedingly difficult to navigate consistently, thus leading to an indeterminate magnitude of level 44. However, it is often theorized that the entrance to an extra-dimensional space can be achieved by subsequently reaching the absolute periphery of this level. As a result of the potential 
substantial relationship between the windows in level 44 and reality. This is frequently highlighted as conceivably true, however, it is not endorsed. Most wanderers who presumably managed to reach a far distance in there have never returned, with most cases being attributed to lack of resiliency and failure to backtrack. Despite the level's emptiness, a particular fluid with unknown atomic compounds in origin has been recovered throughout many of the rooms in level 44. The liquid resembles a coal-like substance with unnatural viscosity and acidity levels. The acid has the ability to corrode cardboard and wood at a rapid rate, and has been reported to dissolve the walls and ceilings of level 44. This chemical compound is known to be able to grow with time, and as such, it poses a potential hazard for wanderers as it becomes more common. The presence of entities in this level is uncommon, however, moans and screeches can often be heard from a distance, usually above the ceiling. Darkness is often thought to be the primary atmosphere in which most beings tend to appear. Almost every type of entity, including wranglers, can be found in the darker sections of level 44, though in restricted amounts. Recently, there have been witnesses of unstationary silhouette figure present on the other side of the window, in the level when viewing through it. It has been reported to give off a feeling of superstition between liminality and anxiety, and will typically appear during apprehensive situations. It is unknown what the true purpose of this figure is. It is thought to symbolize one's experience of fear and worry in regular reality as a consequence of their erratic behavior. Level 45 is an inky void sparsely populated by floating skyscrapers that appear to be near exact copies of buildings that can be found on Earth. The exact number of skyscrapers that have been discovered so far is 33. These skyscrapers are arranged in a radial pattern centering around a building which is structurally identical to that of the Empire State Building. Buildings close to the center of this radial pattern have a constant flow of electricity and are completely free of entities, while buildings further out have frequent blackouts and infestations of death moths. Each skyscraper in level 45 creates its own local field of gravity that is relative to the orientation of the structure. Any object that is thrown out of the building will float weightlessly until it comes into the influence of another skyscraper's gravity. It should be noted that this weightless effect does not extend to the most living things. If a human or entity were to drop off the edge of these skyscrapers, they would continue to be affected by gravity in the direction of the skyscraper which they had just exited. Unless intercepted, they would proceed to fall into the abyss, and from this point it is unknown what becomes of them. The interiors of each building are fully furnished with what is assumed to be exactly what is inside each building when it was copied. This includes everything from computers to water coolers to house plants and more. Unfortunately, none of it is actually functional as close inspection reveals every item to be an elaborate styrofoam sculpture. This has necessitated any groups to take advantage of the relative safety of 45 to bring their own equipment from other areas of the back rooms. Currently, the only way to safely travel between buildings are through fire escapes. Rather than leading outside, each fire escape acts as a consistent gateway to a nearby skyscraper. Level 46 has the appearance of an Arabian desert being dry, hot at day, and cold at night. Level 46 can be found in three states. Day, when the sun is in the sky, temperatures reach 70 degrees Celsius, being fatal to human life. The only way to counteract this is to take refuge in the ruins that can be found in the place, which seem to have special properties. The night is just as deadly, with temperatures dropping to negative 30 degrees Celsius, which leads to hypothermia if not being well equipped. Just like the day, the ruins can be used as safe points because they have heat preservation properties. Dawn is the best time to explore level 46. During this state, the temperature varies between 30 and 40 degrees Celsius, and the lighting, although dim, is enough for exploration. Contrary to what may be thought, level 46 does not follow a 24-hour pattern. Instead, there is a cycle between the three states in which they change in a period of time that seems to be random. Regardless of the state in which level 46 is, sandstorms which cover the entire landscape may appear. The sandstorms are dangerous, as dangerous as the ones on Earth. Additionally, highly hostile entities, the sand spirits, are active during sandstorms. Sand spirits are highly hostile, attacking on site, and their only weakness is any kind of liquids. If you do not have a water supply on hand, taking cover is highly advised. Residing near an oasis is highly recommended during a sandstorm. Oasises are a rare find. Oasises are unaffected by the three states and are one of the best places to find a natural supply of almond water. Level 47 is a temperate forest consisting of both deciduous and coniferous trees. Many of these trees exceed 100 feet in height and appear to be hundreds of thousands of years old. Thick green moss and lichens cover most surfaces suitable for growth. During the daylight hours, the forest is uniformly covered in thick, damp fog, and no direct sunlight has ever been observed. Each night, however, the fog will disperse without fail and reveal a full moon. This moon appears visually identical to the moon from reality, albeit several times closer and with the far side facing towards level 47. Stars in the Milky Way are visible as well, but do not match any constellations visible from Earth. Though rare, silvery white auroras have been seen on occasion. Mapping level 47 has proven to be impossible due to exaggerated space-time distortions. In addition to the non-linear slash non-Euclidean topology that is common occurrence throughout the backrooms, any part of the forest not under direct observation seems to be in a state of super
superposition between all possible states and does not exist in any fixed state or location unless seen. Due to the relatively homogeneous nature of the forest, these changes are typically subtle and not immediately noticeable. This effect is often extremely unsettling to new wanderers who will frequently doubt their own thoughts before doubting the stability of their external reality. It also appears that time is suspended when objects are in a state of superposition, and returning to a state of superposition will often revert any damages or alterations that an object may have incurred while under observation. This means that any campfires or improvised tools and weapons will often, though not always, vanish or revert to an earlier state when direct observation is broken, complicating attempts at survival. Streams and other natural water sources are common on level 47, and are generally safe for human consumption. Mushrooms are the most plentiful and accessible food source, though some species are poisonous or hallucinogenic, and documentation of all native species is incomplete. Level 48 is an infinite sandy beachfront with a presumably infinite lukewarm ocean that is possibly devoid of life south of the beach. This level also consists of a large tropical forest located 200 meters north of the beach. Level 48 has no day-night cycle and is stuck in a permanent state of sunset, with the weather being sunny. Level 48's sun has a red-yellow gradient color and gives off 30% of the sunlight that is received on Earth at noon. This level is of a tropical climate and the temperature varies from 22 degrees Celsius to 36 degrees Celsius, depending on the location within the level. Level 48's beach comprises of many luxury houses and hotels. These buildings vary in size, but they seem to look modern and luxurious in terms of aesthetics. They are all fitted with contemporary furniture and appliances, as well as air conditioning. Level 48 has lots of lush vegetation and edible plants. Because of this, finding food would not be difficult at all. Combined with various livable spaces and amenities, Level 48 has been considered habitable by the MEG. The forest within Level 48 has dense tropical trees, including palm, conifers, broadleaf evergreen, and deciduous trees, with various species of flora and fauna, most of which seem to resemble that of ones on Earth. The fauna are all non-hostile and possibly tameable. The flora and fauna that is unique to level 48 is usually found 30 kilometers north of the beach and as such have not been extensively documented. Level 49 is a massive and endless war zone very comparable to a World War I era battlefield. It is completely devoid of all fighting, however, areas of the battlefield are populated with either red-coated or blue-coated soldiers that appear similar to that of World War I soldiers. This level is only dangerous if one leaves the trench, or if caught outside during a bombing run. Upon leaving the safety of a trench, one will be shot with several thousands of bullets, until they are indistinguishable from the other thousands of bodies that lay across the battlefield. Despite fluorescent tube lights being nowhere in sight, a faint buzzing sound can be heard. Very rarely, planes may fly overhead. Bombs may land on one of the trenches. If this happens to you, remember L-E-A-D. Locate shelter, enter shelter, assure clearance from openings, duck and cover your head. Bombs may fall for four minutes to several hours. During this time, it is extremely important to occupy yourself. All possible measures must be taken to maintain absolute calmness to prevent development of shell shock. If possible, sleep is the best course of action, as the mind will be turned off and further stress will be eliminated. Other options include exercise or, if lucky, playing a game of solitaire with a deck of cards. Upon failure to take preventative measures in the event of a bombing, shell shock begins to set in. Those afflicted with shell shock are reported to have similar effects of real shell shock, unblinking eyes, frequent panic attacks, etc., with some differences. Namely, the largest difference is a slow transformation into one of the many soldiers. Within the course of 48 hours, victims will become completely indistinguishable from other soldiers, and will proceed to act in their manner. Shell shock can be cured through almond water, but this effect is irreversible once completed. Level 50, aptly named the Moribund Highway, is a seemingly endless desert highway. With extreme temperatures and roaming humans with unknown intentions, it makes it difficult for survival. This level is a seemingly infinite four-lane desert highway with two lanes going either way. It consists of countless cars that seem to have been paused. It looks to be this way because the cars are not bumper to bumper. They look as if the universe just stopped in time for them. Furthermore, some can be found stuck in the process of changing lanes. In addition, this level is eerily silent. The only sound one can hear is themselves. This silence can easily drive one mad. Almond water is highly recommended for this level. There is a chance vehicles can be unlocked, and can contain just about anything an average person would carry in them. Notably, all vehicles have Nevada license plates, reading the same text, I-80-L-2-W-V. On the same note, it appears that no vehicle model dates past 2011, and some date back to 1978. It is not advised to get in and remain in any vehicles due to the occurrences on level 22 and level 35. The only known safe vehicle to reside in are mobile homes, such as RVs. This was discovered by a sole explorer after taking shelter in one, due to extreme exhaustion. He slept for a recorded six hours and was well afterward. The true dangers in this level lie with the random humans that roam the highway. A handful of these humans have been spotted, but only one was encountered. 
The sole report of this human encounter resulted in the explorer going AWOL. Because of this, it is advised to avoid them at all costs. On the same note, it is unconfirmed whether or not these are entities or humans grouped together. Much of this level remains undiscovered. Level 51 of the back rooms is an infinite marble maze of Greek origin. No pictures have been taken as cameras do not work here. The maze's floor is lined with gold, while the walls are marble, with a Greek zigzag pattern on them. While in the maze you can find pottery, baskets, and candles lying around in the corners, and wine leaves and branches are covering the golden floors. There are also holes on the ceiling that can come in various shapes and sizes, and if climbed into, you will be taken to level 10. Some holes have black ooze dripping from them. That will take you to level 20. The only normal entities that are found in the maze are special death rats that are white, gold, and purple in color. They seem to have a diet of old wine grapes and leaves that are on the floor. The Minotaur is a beast that will roam around the maze. It has extreme hearing abilities and is way faster than an average human. The beast will usually eat the death rats it finds and will attack any being it contacts, so try not to make much noise as it can hear things from miles away. If you've survived long enough, you will find the exit of the maze to the Lost City. The Lost City is an ancient temple site in a giant infinite cavern with an ancient village. The Minotaur will not enter this area and will turn back if you get to the exit. This city has old markets, houses, and temples, with one large temple in the center. Level 52 is a 100-mile school hallway that has lockers on both sides. Cameras are spotted here and there is a surveillance room. Don't let the door that you can just barely see at the end fool you, because that just leads to another hallway. After 30 miles away from the entrance point, you will start hearing teens and teachers in the classrooms. You can enter the classrooms and they contain supplies like sodas, chips, and almond water and school essentials. At 50 miles in, the hall lights will be off and you will begin to sense a feeling of unease, like somebody is watching you. The main reason for this feeling is unknown, and make sure to watch your back or come with more people, like a group of five at least. Hello there, whoever is reading this, if anyone. My name is Alan Grady, and I am a 37-year-old male. I'm writing this because I am trapped in my own home, and I don't know how to get out. And this is my latest attempt at outside communication. I guess it's best to start where it started. It was December of 2008, almost Christmas. It was just me in the house that day, alone. I don't remember much, but I remember my entire house falling, if that makes any sense. I looked around to see the outside world was still outside my windows. I realized this wasn't the case soon after. I thought things could still be normal after that. I tried opening my front door, but it just led back to my house. I froze in fear. I didn't understand what was going on, nor did I really want to know. It all happened too fast. I, I jolted back to the corner of my wall and sat down with my back against it. I just sat there in shock. What do I do now? I looked around to explore the house itself. Everything there is normal for the most part. All the bedrooms, bathrooms, kitchens, my devices, it's all there, even the basement. Days passed, then the days turned into months, but the sky outside of the window never got dark. It's always early morning, like 7 a.m. maybe? I can't really tell anymore. The clock still works, and it's 4.23 a.m. currently. I haven't gotten much sleep since then, but I never really feel like I need it that often. The food is edible and the water is drinkable, but only from the fridge, and I need to use a filter pitcher. Soon, I thought I'd run out of things to eat, but when I got back down into the basement, there's always a pile of food on the ground that can last me a few days. It doesn't restock at a certain time, though. It's always completely random. One time, it wouldn't restock for weeks. I have no clue how I was able to survive that long and feel normal. It wasn't until that very last week that I started to feel hungry, as if all the previous days had suddenly come back to haunt me. Well, years passed, and during those times I'd get visitors. I still do. But they're not human. They're more tall and slender, and they have no face. They don't seem to be any danger, though. They just aimlessly wander my house. Well, a lot of time has passed now. I recently made many attempts to escape, including breaking the windows. It's always shown a nice neighborhood and some people walking around outside. I would stare at them or even scream to help, but no one did anything. Besides, one time there was a whole group of people just staring at me from afar through the window. I really couldn't sleep after that. I made my efforts to break the windows, but they wouldn't budge until one of them eventually broke, although my efforts were for nothing as it just led back to my house again. Now I'm just here. There seems to be no way out, and it seems like I'm stuck here for the rest of my life. You know, I just miss people. I just wonder why I was brought here. Everything happens for a reason, right? Then what's the reason for this? <sighs> these are questions I can think about later. I'm putting these notes in my mail slip in the front door. Since when I put something through, it never appears on the other side, it has to lead somewhere. Sadly, the space is only small enough to fit in a letter, so that's what I'm doing now. I hope someone does find this, and whoever you are, please help me. Your friend, Alan Grady.
MEG operative Fritz Opel of Division Location Salvation found the note Attempt 53 while scouting the area of Level 9. The note was found in front of a red painted wooden door in a small house. Fritz and other MEG operatives then successfully breached the locked door and entered the building. The wanderer known as Alan Grady was successfully rescued and brought back to Base Alpha in Level 0. Level 54 is a stairwell that flows down in a spiral pattern. The staircase itself is many levels deep and is assumed to be infinite. The walls of this level are a light blue color, old and peeling. Mold covers some parts of the walls and the temperature of the level makes the area very damp. Water drips from the cracks of the walls and the ceiling, which seems to increase the dampness of the level. The air in this level has a scent of rotting wood and a lot of dust, and thick layers of dust also seem to coat the floors. The steps are wooden and rotten, and have a creaky metallic foundation holding the structure up in place. A landmark can be found in the stairway, which seems to be a blue floating orb. This orb emits a sound of the ocean, while emitting sparkles and water drops. Near the entry is an oddity which appears to be a crashed train in the wall. Enter it to be transported to level 61. Level 54 has doors on either side that can lead to other levels, a hallway or another area of the stairwell. The halls in question seem to be within the same building, with the doors on either side and one at the end of the hall that leads back to the stairs. The hall has the same light blue rotting wallpaper as the stairwell with a wooden panel floor. This area is also damp and has a mold scent throughout the hall. The rooms in the halls are mostly empty. Usually the rooms will have wooden chairs lying around or wooden tables in horrible condition. Few rooms have windows, although some may be Entity 2. Some are safe and show a deep blue ocean, with the room itself usually glowing a deep blue from this effect. Rarely a room can be filled with water, but the water seems to stay still when the door is opened. When inside a room, you'll feel lonely even if there are others around you. Rarely, you will be able to hear old boat noises and slight whispers. The sources of these sounds are unknown. Level 55 is a supermarket of unknown size, filled entirely and exclusively with freezer aisles. Each aisle is exactly 55 feet long. The aisles seem to mimic the design and stylings of a number of supermarkets within reality. These markets include, but are not limited to, 7-Eleven, Aldi, Costco, Farm Foods, Iceland, Kmart, Kroger, Morrison's, Target, Tesco, Walmart, and Woolworths. The aisles in level 55 all match a specific decade of supermarkets operations, with the decade in question changing every five aisles. The decade always changes chronologically and will never skip a decade, meaning that a group of aisles representing the 1960s will always lead to a group of aisles representing the 1950s or 70s. Although there is no Wi-Fi in the majority of the level, if you reach the 2000s, 2010s, or 2010s era zone, you can get a signal in the network. Moving through the aisles of level 55 can be a rather arduous task due to its extreme non-Euclidean geometry, which gives you only one path back where you came from, the one you took to get where you are. This is amplified by level 55's lack of any locational or directional indicator, as the markers that have been placed seemingly vanish. Occasionally, you will stumble across what seems to be a wall. It will have double doors reading employees only, which leads you to an area that is known as level 55.1. Level 55 has an odd effects on all goods stored within its freezers, in that they never decay or degrade in any way, remaining pristine no matter how long they are left untouched. This also means that there is no freezer burn in level 55. The MEG recommends against eating foods found within level 55 without having read Research Report 5502 due to its unique effects on the body and mind to those who eat it. Level 56 is composed of several intricate machines which produce fluorescent lights, wallpaper, concrete, glass, and other products that seem to fill the back rooms. These machines turn deceased human bodies into the these products. The means by which the machines do this are completely unknown, especially considering that these items work completely normally. The sight of this manufacturing often has severe effects on one's thoughts, so almond water is an invaluable resource on this level. This area is guarded by what seems to be armed and trained wretches, which, confusingly enough, only attack when approached. This proves that wretches can be tamed, but the process to do so is not known. These wretches line the perimeter of all machines in a uniform line facing away from it. The production machines are very large and complex, and the only comprehensible thing on them is the input, where bodies slowly descend into the machine, and the output, where products exit the machine. Each machine is specialized for one product, although there are multiple machines producing the same items. Level 57 is composed of two sections, hereby referred to as the studio and the gallery respectively. The first part of level 57, the gallery, bears the appearance of a typical western art gallery. However, it appears noticeably empty, filled only with paintings of the back rooms. These paintings vary in scope and style and have even taken on the form of complex floor plans. 
Despite these rare disparities, the majority of the gallery's paintings are stylized perspectives of various backrooms locations. One painting has been found, though, that appears to be a detailed floor plan of level 57 itself, although it is messy and disorganized. Despite its non-uniform nature, it is believed that this floor plan is valid and can be consulted for navigation purposes, proving that level 57 possesses a comprehensible non-random layout. The studio can be accessed via a set of double doors that may occasionally appear within the gallery. It is not considered exceedingly difficult to find them, but an extensive search is usually required. Required, as the double doors seem to avoid wanderers naturally. The studio is a large area filled with art supplies and work in progress paintings. The layout and contents of the studio seem to change when no wanderers are present inside. While the gallery is filled with portraits of the back rooms, paintings within the studio seem to represent objects, places, and people within regular reality. Level 58 is an abandoned water park with tropical trees bearing a strange fruit and many primitive machines used to process them. Strangely enough, a tribe of Neanderthals live here. The consumption of juiced or roasted fruit has effects very compared comparable to almond water based off of the many bottles in the area. It can be assumed that there may be a correlation between this level and almond water. It is unknown how the water is distributed through the levels though. The water park itself is extremely rusted and old, as if present for longer than many of the other levels. However, this is impossible to prove. Much of the park is dysfunctional, although one slide is in working order despite its extreme rust and leakiness. Sliding down this slide leads to level 58.1, an extremely bizarre dark side. Do not enter this slide. More like dark slide. <laughs> Level 59 is an endless underground railway system. There are two sections to it, the subway and the tunnels. The subway takes the appearance of the London Underground, and is used mostly to link between different railways, just as a normal subway would. There are 11 different lines, all differentiated with different colors. Along those lines are also three other lines that are actually in reference to a different level, Level 72, but are just mentioned in this level. In the subway, there's frequently a strong gust of wind that hits the explorer, most likely from the tunnels. The walls are white with some advertising posters. The posters themselves do not contain comprehensible text. Large staircases go up 200 steps can also be found in the subway. The subway is regarded to be safer than the tunnels because there aren't as many entities, but there is still the occasional hound, death rat, clicker, and faceling. The tunnels are the other part of level 57 that can be accessed by going to any station in the subway. In the tunnels, there is a never-ending smell of corroded metal and occasionally sounds like moving trains, even though trains are not seen in this level. The tunnels are infested with entities like skin stealers, smilers, hounds, and crawlers. Level 59 does not have any supplies, and it is very possible to go insane in. Level 60 is a sprawling complex of rooms similar to a retro laundromat, complete with washing machines, drying machines, vending machines, and more detergent and dryer sheets than you could ever need. The machines are all functional, but only if you use coins. Coins are flat, round pieces of metal that function as currency in level 60. You can obtain them by breaking open any washing or drying machine. The machines all use soapy water in their cleaning process, so do not drink it. You can buy fresh and almond water in the vending machines. Many people come in and out of this level to wash their clothes and resupply. Level 61 is an infinite train that appears to be from the mid-2000s. Level 61 is infinite, so crossing between cars on the train is not recommended, as you can get lost. The train cars can have multiple junctions in them, which is not possible in reality. They have windows too, with scenery outside. Once you look away from one, they can disappear, as it is completely randomly generated, so you should never leave the starting car. The starting car has the conductor of the train. He is a friendly entity and will answer some questions. If you do end up walking down multiple cars, you can find many child and adult facelings that all have the level 11 effect. If you wander in this level for a few days, the car style will get older as you go forward, until it looks like a train built in the 1850s. Level 62 is the backyard of a mostly dilapidated house with overgrown vegetation. The house is surrounded by brick walls that are impossible to climb since it appears to grow taller when approached. A well-maintained doghouse can be found in the backyard. There is a hole in one of the corners of the brick walls big enough for a person to fit through that leads to a vast jungle. Level 63 is a vast open space in the sky which is sparsely filled with several wooden bridges and platforms. They hang suspended by unknown means over the expansive void which stretches out over the entire length of the level. The bridges are made of hard oak and they form a dense network of pathways around the level which ultimately lead nowhere. Other structures that make up the pathway are ladders, rails, and in some cases, monkey bars, which all hang suspended over the void. All of these are made of the aforementioned oak wood. Walls of large, green, vine-like structures emerge from the void, reaching up to the visible top of level 63. They form far away from the pass of the level, making it so that no wanderer could ever feasibly get near them. The walls continuously shift, forming elaborate patterns and breaking them down in the span of minutes. The composition of the vines is as of yet unknown, but is generally assumed to be the same as normal vines outside this level. Level 63 is presumed to be very high up in the sky for various reasons. The atmospheric pressure in this level is slightly lower than the regular 
at 1 atm, and large clusters of clouds can be seen forming periodically around the level, despite the general temperature of level 63 being at a constant 18 degrees celsius. One interesting quirk that level 63 possesses is a strange day-night cycle. While the level is constantly in a state of day, the sun still constantly moves around the level as if it were cycling through a regular day. It is unknown how daylight is still maintained during periods where the sun is absent. The level is entirely devoid of any living things save for the vines. Because of this, the only sounds that can be heard in this level are the occasional gusts of wind, the creaking of wooden bridges, and if close enough, the shifting of the vines. Natural hazards are also uncommon in level 63. While the bridges frequently appear to be misshapen and poorly constructed, there are very few reports of wanderers that indicate they actually break down. Even in the unlikely case where a bridge does break down, falling into level 63's abyss is never fatal, as falling for a long while in level 63 will simply take you to another level. Because of this lack of hazards, level 63 has earned an established reputation of being a good place for meditation and relaxation. The lack of entities, relative safety, and overall peaceful nature of level 63 makes it so that wanderers feel at ease when being in the level. Level 64 is an infinite house area with many rooms, halls, and stairways. The level itself is littered with house decor more than what you would find in an average everyday household. The darkness in level 64 absorbs light, and light sources are dysfunctional. A working method is being constructed by the MEG at this moment. The structure of the house seems to change when no sentient beings are looking, which can cause the wanderer to feel anxiety and or paranoia. Level 64 can also cause wanderers to receive symptoms similar to nyctophobia for the amount of time that one can spend in the darkness. The furniture in level 64 is very average what you'd find normally on Earth. However, a significant amount of mold and dust can be found in different surfaces. Most of the level has a large amount of items, to the point where some items are placed in impossible ways. There are many light sources spread across the level, but none can be activated. Any books and other written materials are found blank. Many rooms and halls found in level 64 can be drastically different than normal, such as a room full of clocks ticking in unison with a grandfather clock in the center, on a pile of more clocks, upside down halls, pitch black halls of void, and many other oddities. Through unknown means, level 64 will sometimes transform itself into a normal house interior that is finite, and with many entrances and exits that can be found. All light sources will be activated and no entities will appear during this stage. It is unknown how or why this happens, as it appears to be random when traversing too far in level 64. It is suggested to exit through one of the many access points during this stage. Level 65 is a persistently foggy forest that contains a variety of different types of deciduous trees, primarily of species that are not believed to be found on Earth. All of the trees in the level seem to have undergone a standard autumn color change, with each of their leaves turning a blood red hue. These blood red leaves sometimes fall off the trees and can be found littering the ground. A thick, humid fog permeates throughout the level, so much so that the sky has never been spotted, though it is suspected that there is some light source above the fog, as the entire level is in a constant state of dim twilight. The level has no other weather aside from cool winds, which blow intermittently, keeping the level constantly at relatively chilly temperatures. The trees in the level seem partially carnivorous, subsisting partially off of the bodies of wanderers who get lost or die there, with bodies being absorbed into the ground mere hours after their death. In addition to these trees, there is some fauna consisting mostly of oversized bugs, most notable giant centipedes that have been seen growing over six feet long. Level 66 appears as a swamp, similar to the Florida Everglades. This level has a large amount of entities, with special death rats that swim in swamp water. It's hard to navigate the level and there's no pathways. Isolation is common, but drinking enough almond water can help. There are also alligator entities, which have remained unnamed. In the swamp, there is a shack. While this place is mostly empty, it contains a table, a bed, and one old photo of army soldiers from the 1900s. A crashed cargo plane is also present in this level. In this plane, there are old supplies consisting mainly of expired food and drinks, but both are not safe for consumption. In addition, it is also possible to find weapons and gas masks. After wandering through the swamps for a few days, a siren will play for several minutes. The source of the noise is unknown. After the siren stops, no ambience can be heard at all. Sometime after, a strange entity resembling a human wearing 1920s era uniform and a gas mask will appear. This entity can be seen staring from afar. If approached, the entity will walk away and then seemingly disappear. After this, you can hear planes in the sky, none of which are visible. After a few weeks, explosions can be heard and gas will begin consuming the swamps. This gas is dangerous, avoid it at all costs. The exit points are not affected by the gas but the gas masks, ones on hand or from the plane crash, will come in handy. During this phase, the alligator entities are much stronger, now in the form of having gas emitting from their bodies. At this point, the masked entities will be in groups, running through the murky waters. Any attempts to distract these entities will result in failure unless physical interaction are made. Successful interactions will result in being approached and grabbed by the entities. They may also say things like, come with us, this place is dangerous. Come over here, you need help. Stay calm, don't panic. After this interaction, you will be sent to level 14. This is all 
all the information the MEG has discovered so far. More information will be posted when it becomes available. Level 67 takes the form of a bakery from the 1980s. Unlike most levels which are commonly infinite, this level takes on the average size of a bakery. The interior will change color according to the explorer's favorite color as well as produce items within the bakery that will appeal to one's interests. Because there are no items within that could show the name of the bakery, fellow wanderers who have entered the bakery have nicknamed it the Bakery of Desire. Level 68 physically resembles that of a massive movie theater complex, with long stretching corridors lined with doors each leading to a room. These rooms have rows of chairs which vary in number and design. However, they invariably are colored red, with a mucus-like substance coating the surface. Despite these abnormalities and overall distasteful characteristics, humans will often be inclined to seat themselves in the nearest chair which is usually described as abnormally comfortable. Once all individuals present within the room are seated, the chairs will release a chemical enzyme which will rapidly melt and re-solidify human tissue and organic fabrics, often resulting in an individual becoming fused with the chair, making it impossible for one to remove themselves from it. Though due to the effect these chairs have on the human mind, this is often unnoticed. Once this process is complete, a film will begin to play on the screen of the room. These videos are unique to each specific room and do not correlate with any existing films outside of the back rooms. These movies are often graphic in nature, though people viewing do not respond in ways that would normally be expected in such situations, such as repulsion or disgust, possibly meaning that these videos may have a hypnotic effect. Once the movie ends, those who are watching it will begin to seize violently before dying due to shock. Following this, the body will be broken down via digestive enzymes and absorbed into the chairs and siphoned into other parts of level 68, possibly for survival. Taking this into account is not recommended that those in level 68 enter these rooms. Level 69 is an infinite highway with tall, weathered concrete walls on its sides. It appears to have been long abandoned. The highway is completely devoid of vehicles or any sign of civilization except for the fact that it is a highway. Your vision will be limited because of the strange fog slash mist that will surround you. Except for special circumstances, the only light you will encounter will be the light you produce yourself. Note. Any joking about this level's number being number 69 will not be tolerated. This information is much too important for readers to be acting like a 12 year old. Thank you. I mean, it's still kind of fun. Level 70 is a large depot-like area with hallways and large depot rooms in between hallways. Its air smells of dust and its walls have storage containers in the walls and concrete between the units. The containers are labeled from 0 to 999. The hallways of level 70 have concrete floors and walls and have a dusty smell in the air. Many containers can be used as hiding places to hide from entities and contain items from the opener's past, such as old game consoles or stuffed animals. Interacting with these items has proved to be deadly and may injure or kill the user, and can be identified as a nostalgia trap. These are located in containers across the entire level. Level 71 resembles a large basement which is largely unfinished. This basement has no walls besides the entrance and is practically infinite in most directions. No ends were discovered in the north, west, and east. If you walk to the south you'll find the entrance wall, which in itself seems infinite. Follow this wall for guidance as there isn't any landmarks to keep in mind. However, this basement area does include wooden scaffolding and support beams around the level. Dust and what appears to be sand cover the floors and walls. Lights are completely absent in level 71, and a light source is needed for exploration. The level itself has the anomalous effect of changing the vision of the wanderer to black and white. This effect will present throughout the level. This effect isn't harmful to the human body and mind, and can be handled with relative ease. While in level 71, you may hear echoes that occur every 14 to 16 hours. The echoes are noises that the wanderer has a fond memory of and would recognize immediately. The source of the noises are unknown. There are almost no entities in sight when roaming level 71. However, that does not mean that they can't be encountered. Skin stealers and hounds do exist within the level. Level 71 is also the second encounter with the businessmen, which were first discovered in level negative one. You may find them when traveling too far in level 71. No other entities have been recorded at the moment. Evidence found via exploration has shown that level 71 may possibly have a connection to level negative zero and level 91 due to the businessmen and the noir type filter affecting your vision. Level 72 is a long railway system that is above the ground. There are three lines with trains that connect to each other and also level 59. There are two main parts of level 72, the railway and the underpass. The railway is an empty track of railways for passenger trains with different stations and small buildings that would normally act as waiting areas in real life. There are some trains that do not work, but can be entered. In the small buildings, there are sometimes water coolers that dispense almond water. The railway is considered to be much safer because of the water supply, no entities, and the fact that you can meet up with other people so as to not go insane. Some people have pointed out that the railway looks quite similar to the London Overground and DLR system. The underpass is a very similar section of level 72 that supposedly would be an engine room. It's completely empty inside. There are some entities in the underpass, that being clumps and crawlers, but so long as you stay away from the underpass, you're safe. 
The sky in level 72 is gray, and every 10 days it rains. There is only one currently accessible part of level 73, comprised of a medium-sized island that every wanderer will no clip into. There is an ocean surrounding the island that remains unexplored, and is incredibly dangerous to enter due to the presence of unidentified aquatic entities. As of now, no other land masses have been discovered. Level 73 is an incredibly difficult level to survive due to the catastrophic amount of entities that appear in it. Save for the Silver Castle, located at the highest point of the island, there is no place devoid of hostile entities. The entity density in this level is estimated to be 1 per 35 square feet. Entities encountered on this level include windows, smilers, male and female death moths, clumps, dullers, hounds, skin stealers, death rats, and camo crawlers. These entities are not only extremely hostile, but will gather in large groups to attack the nearest human on the island, hunting them relentlessly until they die. The only way humans can survive in this level is to hide in the Silver Castle under the protection of Corin. Level 73 is in a near perpetual state of darkness. There is no day or night cycle. Instead, a full moon constantly lights up the squalid black and red ground below, never changing from its position. The moon is prone to being blocked out by suffocating thick black clouds, plunging the entire level into darkness. No matter how dark it is, do not use an artificial light source. You do not want to see until you reach the doors of Silver Castle. When no clipping into level 73, you will almost always find yourself within the eyesight of the Silver Castle. It is imperative to run straight to the castle. Do not look around, do not stop moving, do not slow down. If you reach the doors without being immediately mauled by a horde of entities, bang on the door as loud as possible, and you will be safe. Level 74 is a theater stage. There are 20 rows of seats and a door out into the hallways every 5 rows, making a total of 8 doors in total. This level stage is easily accessible with two sets of stairs on either end. The stage flooring has an underfloor heating with various trapdoors that can lead to the insulation. The hallway of level 74 bear resemblance to the main seating area with walls of brick and tiled flooring. These hallways are relatively expansive with them having various popcorn machines and posters. The posters in question resembling carnival posters with each main image being a drawing of a seemingly random level. Notably, some of these images are currently unrecognized levels. The hallways themselves contain stairways, elevators, and three and four-way intersections. These hallways all loop back around to another door of level 74 seating area. However, this isn't done via non-Euclidean means. Instead, arriving back is something believed to be done subconsciously, with every choice made by an individual slowly leading them back to the main area. Upon entering, the level seats will be occupied by humanoid figures. These individuals will resemble people that a specific wanderer has met. These can be anyone from family members to mere passers-by. These people will all have simplified facial expressions and actions, and will always be watching the stage. The stage will initially be filled with other faintly recognizable people in white masks. The figures on stage will dance in specific actions. The actions are believed to relate to certain things seen in dreams. For example, they will sometimes drop shredded paper near their mouths to simulate teeth falling out, act of falling over and dying, chasing each other, and other actions relating to dreams. The longer one stays in the level, the more dangerous it becomes. Upon staying in this level for approximately two hours, all figures and people in the seats will immediately vanish. After, the feeling of being watched sets in as noises beyond the walls begin to become audible. They may sound like the movement of entities, shifting and creaking metal, or gusts of wind from somewhere outside the level. If one stays in level 74 for an extended period of time, one would witness effects of the walls closing in, seat rows expanding infinitely, and sounds getting louder as figures appear in your peripheral vision. While appearing extremely real to those that bear witness, these hallucinations are nothing more than an effect on the brain that level 74 inflicts. Level 75 is a large group of narrow interconnected caves entirely made out of gallium. The exact size of the level is unknown, as only approximately 10 kilometers of caves have been confirmed. Gallium is the only material found in the level. Temperatures of level 75 vary between 10 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius dropping and rising every three to four hours. As the melting point of gallium is approximately 30 degrees Celsius, the caves of level 75 melt and solidify again. It is worth noting that not all areas of the level are heated at the same time. When the level is warm enough, gallium can drip on the wanderer's body, blocking the caves and, most of the time, suffocating the wanderer in tons of liquid metal. When the level collapses, gallium drips down to the bottom. It regenerates by falling back down from above, forming an infinite loop. The caves of level 75 are constantly changing due to the extremely strong hot winds, which build and twist the caves in random shapes. Because of that, caves of level 75 do not have an exact width or height. In most cases, though, the caves are no wider than 5 meters and no taller than 2 meters. It is highly recommended leaving the level as quickly as possible because staying in there for long periods of time is always a death sentence. At all times, wanderers who are in the level will experience pitch black darkness, so it is highly advised to bring a flashlight and use it as sparingly as possible because of the heating properties of the light. Due to the lack of any natural light source, exploration of level 75 is nearly impossible because the environment of level 75 is entirely devoid of entities. As level 75 is the only known source of elemental gallium, people will often try to come here to collect some gallium. The MEG organizes yearly expeditions for mass harvesting. This task is extremely dangerous, so MEG constructs special large boxes for mining in case the cave starts melting. 
Gallium from level 75 is used in electronics, construction of semiconductors, and weapons. Level 67 consists of an infinite sewer-like labyrinth that contains a multitude of tunnels. The textures and appearance of the walls are known to occasionally change as one progresses through the labyrinth. Some explorers have documented some areas akin to the serenity of a hotel pool, or the ever-threatening vibe of an abandoned factory, while others have described the areas as horrifically foul and gory. Within these diverse sections, a variety of resources can be found based on the level it resides. Each section appears to be set as a sort of scene. Some sections can span for miles or 20 feet. It is advised that if there is a sulfur-like smell emanating from the tunnel entrance, turn around and leave as soon as possible. Level 76 has only one form of entity, only referred to as eyes in the dark. Their descriptions vary, but their main identifying features are their bright white eyes, a long blue ball, Body and spider-like legs. Level 77 is a passenger train of anomalous length. Its design resembles a typical London underground train. The train is located underground within a railroad. It is thought that level 77 is located within level 72. A pattern that is prominent within level 77 is the pattern of the train. Within, the details of the train's color change around every five cars, shifting between seven different colors. Each of these colors indicate an entity that will appear in the car. One notable feature of level 77 are the position signs that occupy each car. These do not change, only displaying the text, unknown position. The reason for this display has been thought to be because level 77 is in a location where the position is unable to be calculated. Calculated. Level 77 has been described as boring by wanderers, not exactly having much to do within it. There are various but ineffective forms of entertainment, such as newspapers. These newspapers notably only have headlines on them. All pages past the two front pages are blank for unknown reasons. Most of these stories are particularly graphic, such as an unusually detailed stories of brutal murder and kidnapping. The cockpit to the train is usually near the entrance to level 77, always behind the initial entrance's view. Within, there is a single faceling as the train's pilot. This faceling is completely unresponsive, however, life functions still remain. The controls within the cockpit are unusable and do not affect any aspect of level 77. There is a prominent hum-buzz noise within level 77, notably similar to the noise within level 0. Level 78 is a space station, similar in design to the International Space Station, but extending for an unknown amount of distance in four cardinal directions. There is no detectable gravity in this level. Nearly everything in this level is coded in a multitude of devices, buttons, levers, and screens, but none of them seem to have any sort of power. In addition, several walls have been covered in what seems like level zero wallpaper, loosely fitting on the many gizmos. Unlike most backrooms levels, level 78 seems to have a variety of differentiated rooms and corridors, with many identifiable purposes, although all of them are in severe state of disrepair. Each one of these is separated from the others and from regular corridors by airlocks, with most of them open. Hydroponic gardens line the corridors, but the plants living there have either dried up or are widely overgrown out of their gardens in search for nutrients. These plants do not seem to require sunlight to function, instead metabolizing the metal and cloth on the level's walls. Space laboratories are often found around dead ends within the weightless halls, and the ones in the greatest stage of disrepair. These rooms usually have floating droplets of sewage water suspended in midair, and for some strange reason, dehydrated rations. The toilets in particular seem to be prone to hiding clumps. It is advised to stay away. What has been identified as bedrooms are the most seldom found differentiated room of level 78. These are similar to the corridors, but do not have any sort of device on the wall. Instead, they are lined with open and severely damaged sleeping bags, with most intact ones being stuffed with shards of plastic, glass, cloth, and what appear to be hair. Occasionally, travelers may encounter what some call a pod bay. These are semicircular rooms with an airlock leading to the outside of the station, labeled with a green exit sign. The room itself is made out of a pallid yellow wall with similarly colored harnesses, with a small chance of an EVA spin suit resting on them. All found suits have some sort of critical damage that renders them unusable, with the most common, but not exclusively to all, being a smashed helmet. The airlock has a porthole exposed to the vacuum, and the airlock itself seems to be one of the few devices of the level that actually has any sort of power to function. Level 79 consists of a 100 meter square field of grass, with a watchtower at the center. When looking at the building from the outside, it has two floors and is a few meters off the ground. There are a set of stairs at the side that can be used to get to the tower itself. The place is in good condition, but it seems that it has not been used for years. The building contains the useful things a normal house would have, a small kitchen, living room, a bedroom at the second floor, and a dry toilet on the ground level. The second floor has multiple mattresses. The kitchen tap is a source of almond water too. About 100 meters from the front of the building, a wheat field starts. It is impossible to reach because the grass right before it isn't solid, and any attempts to get to the field will simply result in you falling through the ground into the void. After a while, you will wake up on the first floor again. Behind the building is a forest that can be used to exit. Entities don't seem to roam around the area, but can be seen in the field. They can't seem to notice people for some reason, so they shouldn't be worried about. 
They seem to be the same entities in level 10. It's still advised to stay inside. Level 80 is an endless two-lane highway, which stretches in both directions and loops back in on itself after a certain amount of time. The furthest the highway has looped is recorded at 13.3 kilometers. Traveling further is possible, but unlikely. The highway is located in a cold desert basin. No other human infrastructure can be found. If you have entered the highway, a Himalayan mountain range would be visible to the left. Its distance from the road is estimated to be around 40 kilometers away. If you've entered from the desert, the mountain range will be at the opposite side where you arrived. It is unclear how this phenomenon works. The level has no daylight cycle and is locked in a permanent daytime. Despite this, temperatures in this level can reach from 1.2 degrees Celsius down to negative 26.5 degrees Celsius. Changes in temperature can happen at random, but no last more than a few hours. The amount of oxygen in this level is also at an exceedingly large volume. After traveling for at least three kilometers, you will eventually come across an abandoned settlement. A nearby signpost denotes the name Negdel. The word was painted onto the sign with an unidentified red substance. It appears that there is writing under the paint, but it cannot be read due to the obfuscation. The settlement consists of a large yurt and several caravans scattered about. Three decomposing corpses have been retrieved from the yurt, along with around 40 skeletal remains, which were gathered around the general area. Both the yurt and caravans may contain containers, with most of them being either empty or containing valuables or personal belongings. Recovered artifacts vary in age, varying from around the 12th century up until the 1980s. Most of these artifacts can be traced back to Central Asia on Earth. Level 81 consists of many different office-like buildings, similar to those on Earth. The interiors of these buildings vary, but many common themes have been noted. The walls of Level 81 can vary in material from brick to concrete to wallpaper, and can appear in several colors such as light blue, dark green, and yellow. These walls may also vary in texture and design. Equally, the floors of level 81 may appear as carpet, concrete, or occasionally laminate wood slats. Lighting within level 81 varies broadly. Light fixtures may flicker and cause blackouts similar to those in level 0 and level 1. Despite these imperfections, level 81 possesses a reliable power grid, and by extension, Wi-Fi. Windows are common and safe. No sightings of Entity 2 have been recorded as of yet. When first entering level 81, the level will be unnaturally quiet. After wandering for a few hours, various animal noises will be heard, and it's possible to encounter animals by following such noises. Many animals from Earth can be encountered, such as horses, pigs, canines, felines, cattle, birds, etc. Potentially dangerous creatures such as bears, lions are also present. The leading theory concerning level 81's large animal population, as proposed by MEG Regiment Compass Point, is that level 81 is the starting level for non-human creatures on Earth, in comparison to how level zero is the starting level for humans. Despite the abundance of Earth animals within level 81, various entities can also be encountered, such as smilers, skin stealers, male death moths, dullers, jerry, and hounds, although it is possible more entities may inhabit the level. The overall structure and position of interiors in level 81 is considered unnatural. Various rooms have been observed clipping into other walls and generating attached vertical hallways that bend gravity accordingly. Some rooms may be filled with almond water, harboring several forms of sea life. The windows of level 81 project an outside area that can be entered, though this area shouldn't exist due to the mass of halls and rooms which should be obstructing it. When outside of level 81's office buildings, it's possible to view a long, winding road. It is also possible to observe several of the animals present within the building through windows. The outside area of level 81 appears to emit a subtle green light, which when interacted with, directly or indirectly, causes all nearby animals to appear startled and retreat out of fear. The sky of level 81 is dark and cloudy, and no stars or other celestial bodies such as the moon are visible. Drone surveillance footage has captured many more buildings in the distance, however, attempting to reach these buildings will result in the offending individual arriving back at the main road. Level 82 is reminiscent of a very large mansion with different rooms. Although many times they will correspond to its door, other times the door can take you to other levels. This property increases the further you go into the house. In the beginning, the place seems completely safe, but the further you advance, the number of entities that appear increases. Right at the entrance to the level, a plaque is read in which the apparent owner of the mansion mentions the existence of a treasure. Although its existence has not yet been proven, many wanderers have decided to accept the challenge. Welcome to my mansion, wanderer. I'm sure you've been through a lot to get here, so I think you're up to the challenge. Hidden here is my treasure, more valuable than anything you can imagine. But don't think I made it easy for you. To get there, you must overcome challenges that will test your body and soul, so I know that you will be worthy of claiming it. I wish you the best of luck. The Philanthropist. Level 83 consists of a sunken nuclear submarine named the USS Ace of Spades, in the middle of what seems to be an endless ocean. The Ace of Spades lies on the ocean floor, inside a rocky underwater valley. 
which bathometer evaluations have revealed is at a depth of approximately 600 meters. The submarine's controls are non-functional, but the appliances inside of the vessel, such as light fixtures and kitchen appliances, are in solid working condition. The nuclear reactor of the Ace of Spades is still operational, and despite the wear on the outside of the hull, the interior remains intact. There are several refrigerators inside the Ace of Spades that contain bottled water and several food items, such as sandwiches, pasta, fruits, vegetables, eggs, and meat. When removed from the refrigerators, the items will eventually restock, meaning the Ace of Spades contains an infinite supply of food and water. The makeup of the Ace of Spades is identical to a Los Angeles-class submarine, with one exception. The Ace of Spades has several windows on both sides of the vessel, which can be used for observation. There is no known real-world equivalent to the Ace of Spades, and thus the MEG believes that she originated from the backrooms themselves. Through these windows, several species of fish commonly found in the Pacific Ocean have been documented, such as Pacific salmon, ragfishes, and Atka mackerel. What lies outside of the Ace of Spades has not been explored, as those who try to exit the submarine are transported to level 7, as soon as they spend more than 10 minutes outside. However, several rock formations and occasional flashes of movement can be observed through the windows. Nothing else of note has been recorded because of the poor visibility of the water due to its depth. Level 84 is an expansive hedge maze with high walls made out of dark green leaves, many routes that lead essentially nowhere, and light fog persisting at all times. Occasionally routes can lead to small rooms imitating various areas of a suburban home, such as living rooms, kitchens, and bedrooms. Rarely, the furniture in one of these areas will be arranged in a seemingly random position within the space and in disrepair. Currently at the time of writing, the cause of this damage is unknown. However, Level 84 isn't just a maze. Every so often, wanderers can come across large spacious areas dotted throughout with trees, foliage, and concrete walkways. These have been labeled by Level 84 inhabitants and wanderers as safety parks. Level 85 is a large 13th century ship which afloats on an endless sea. This ship is extremely large and is estimated to have required at least 50 people to operate it. This ship appears to be in full operable condition, however, it has been deemed nearly impossible to sail because doing so would require a large amount of manpower, knowledge, and strength to do. The boat features one layer of five cannons on each side, all of which are completely functional. It also sports one mast. In the captain's quarters resides a map, which shows a confusing directions to what is believed to be a buried treasure on a small island. Decoding efforts have been made, however, none have been successful. The object which the map leads to is purely speculative, as it may be possible that the treasure has already been looted, therefore making the map useless. It is unknown if the make of the ship is constant between all entrances, as there have been no record of wanderers entering this level twice. Level 86 is an office building consisting of 31 floors. Like in level 4, in this you can find chairs, tables, and in rare cases computers in addition to other office supplies. It is mostly devoid of aggressive entities, making it a safe place to rest or create an outpost. This level, like a level 11, presents what is known as the level 11 effect, which which makes entities' behavior change to make them act as normal people. Level 87 consists of hallways which are miles long, similar to level 21. Each of these hallways has locked doors lining them, and every few miles it is possible to find a table. These will usually have a key on them and can rarely have a bag of potato chips or almond water. Specific types of keys can open specific types of locks. Although they may seem to be random, there is a finite number of locks and keys, and they are usually color, number, or letter coded. The strangest property of this level is that it seems to be non-linear. Although it is uncommon, wanderers report seeing past or future versions of themselves for a short while before simply disappearing. Interacting with your past or future selves isn't too difficult but can be risky. If you do, it is possible to give your past or future selves items and things to survive. The way paradoxes solves themselves is by creating an infinite time loop that past versions of you are stuck in. Wanderers may see themselves anywhere from 5 minutes to a few years in the past or future. It is advised to be careful in these situations. These time anomalies will not occur all the time. Be very wary of interacting with past or future selves because they may attempt to harm or kill you. If you end up creating Creating a paradox, for example, killing yourself, the gear maker will intervene. What happens to you is unknown, so do not attempt to do this. Level 88 has the appearance of a hotel corridor that seems to stretch to infinity both ways. The walls are always a light brown, has a dim but constant lighting, and new smelling carpets. The level is characterized by having a pair of doors every approximately 7 meters. Most of the time these doors lead to common rooms with little or no furniture. Dollars are relatively common in them, so it's not recommended entering unless there is something of value inside. Some of the things that have been found in these rooms are knives, lamps, and royal rations. These, however, are not the only rooms that are worth entering. There are also a series of special rooms you can find when accessing through this level. Despite what you may think, these rooms do not adapt to the 7 meter space between doors. They can have a great variety of sizes that can even exceed the sizes imposed by the corridor itself. Level 89 takes the form of a 1940s ice cream parlor. A wanderer arriving
sitting here will, 98.7% of the time, appear at the entrance of the parlor, with a canopy sign atop the door reading, A Taste of Home, established 1938. The exterior of A Taste of Home is pristine, with no signs of damage or flaws. The walls are the color of a rosy, muted pink, and the roof is a creamy beige. Flowers are commonly spotted decorating the field around the building, varying from roses to asters to white lilies. The scent outside smells faintly of smoke, cupcakes, and blood. The parlor is surrounded by Cornelius cherry trees which presumably stretch on infinitely. Attempts to walk away from the parlor and through the trees will eventually bring the wanderer back through the building. As such, there is no point of exit from level 89 through the infinite grove. Upon entry, one will be greeted by faceless cutouts of ice cream scoopers. Once more, the interior is clean and as immaculate as the outside. However, unlike the exterior, the walls are a dark blue gray. So like, listen, level 90 used to be bad. I mean, real bad. But don't worry, our team has got straight to work to make it great, wonderful, and habitable place for you. It's a huge house, two floors, a pretty big attic, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, tons of space for you to safely put all your things. Great improvement from the old torture labyrinth that used to be. There used to be a huge death threat infestation here, but again, you don't need to worry. Our amazing exterminator guy got the job done. You wouldn't have ever been able to tell that it was there in the first place. We're all pretty proud of the job we've done here, and we hope you appreciate it too. Level 91 is an area that seems to be a copy of a location that is out of the back room, specifically in Kentucky. In level 91, everything, including items and beings from other areas, are shaded in black and white tone. It was originally believed that this effect on one's vision and not actually the color of the level itself, though this has been disputed by photos taken within level 91. When inside of level 91, it is impossible to encounter any other survivors also inside of level 91. Due to the nature of this level, it is not infinite and can be mapped by using its real life counterpart. The level spans for a few miles at most. It seems to mirror that of the Indiana-Kentucky border region, though several notable towns are missing. Attempting to go too far in level 91 will result in no clipping through a floor into another level, and only a certain part of the real world can actually be explored. Attempts to go to a corresponding location in the real world and contact someone inside of level 91 has been made, though most people attempting this have gone missing. There is only one entity in level 91, a mysterious shadowy figure who appears from a distance. They appear to wear some sort of wide-brimmed hat, though nothing else about them can be identified. The entity stalks whoever is lost in the level, and it is widely believed that seeing the entity is a bad omen. Level 92 appears to be an infinite hall and stairway. The halls and stairs have this glowing effect on it. The color of the level is mostly crimson red. This level is completely devoid of entities besides the halls. Wanderers that explore this level with more than one person seemingly become alone in the level, but all wanderer groups that come out say that they were at the same level. Level 93 appears to be a seemingly baseless mountain alike to the appearance to the Himalayan mountain Mount Everest. If level 93 does have a base, it has yet to be recorded. All discovered entities of the back rooms perish in level 93. The only traces of entities in level 93 are their frozen corpses buried in the snow. Entities without a physical form, such as smilers and howlers, do not spawn in level 93. Level 93's composition is very weak, simply consisting of ice, snow, sodium, carbon, low concentrations of iron, mercury, arsenic, and bismuth, and occasionally quartz. Due to this, it is extremely risky to scale or explore level 93 due to the incredible probability of landslides or avalanches. Protective equipment is advised when exploring level 93. Level 94 appears to be a large town, a floating castle, and grass hills, but everything has a grainy effect, as if the place was crafted. The main town is safe, with no entities during the day. This town has a big water fountain in the center, flowing with almond water. This town seems to be in the 30s, in a stop-motion type aesthetic. This town has tiny houses with some furniture, mostly in the 1930s and 50s. The town also has 1930s cars and milk trucks, filled with almond milk. The town also has siren poles, which time to time play happy, cartoony music. Music. At this time, everything is safe until it turns to night. The music will stop completely, and at this time, the entity known as Animations will start to appear and will attack violently if spotted. Other entities that appear in the night are Smilers, Skin Stealers, Hounds, and Male Death Moths. But there are also Death Rats, which have evolved to look like a normal rat in a stop motion look because the animations usually attack anything that does not look animated. The grass hills of level 94 usually go on forever and is infinite. The only thing there are a few strange cars parked in the middle of nowhere and a water tower, which seems to contain almond water. What's strange about the hills is the random set of furniture and even entire single rooms of a house can be found, or sometimes it's just a wall with furniture next to it. Above the hills, you will see a floating castle on what looks like a transparent mountain. With walls comprised mostly of bricks and stone, level 95 is a series of interconnected corridors that stretch from small to enormous distances. Traversing through the level is no easy task, as the bizarre architecture present all throughout it poses a significant obstacle to many. Furthermore, not all corridors are supplied with natural sources of light. Some corridors are completely devoid of any lighting, thus making 
making exploration extremely arduous. Windows are almost always present in every single wall of the level, even if what appears to be behind the wall is nothing but another corridor. These windows are the main source of natural lighting, although it is still unknown exactly what it emits. Looking outside these windows shows nothing but an empty, presumably endless white void. It is unknown if these windows are instances of Entity 2, as no figure can be seen from the other side, and no reports of attacks on wanderers have yet been documented. Given that the corridors are mostly empty, sounds easily echo throughout them and reach really far distances. This makes it extremely easy to detect any life form from afar, should they be emitting any form of noise. It should be noted, however, that this also makes wanderers highly susceptible to being spotted by an entity, so minimal noise should be made while walking through the level, especially if in groups or in the vicinity of an entity nearby. Sometimes, some noises can be heard from the other side of walls, even if there is no probable source for them nearby. These include, most commonly, scratching on walls, footsteps, whispers, debris falling, and humming. It should also be cognizant that these sounds appear to have no physical source, but one should always be on alert if they experience any form of the aforementioned sounds. It is not known what really lies behind some of these walls. The entirety of the level appears to be mostly devoid of any valuable resources, although sometimes, and seemingly out of nowhere, one can find a wooden box of almond water bottles bottles hidden behind short walls or wooden barricades. These have been proven to be safe for consumption, but are very hard to find. Rarely, a corridor can lead to a staircase. These staircases lead to what is called the underneath, the floor below the main level of 95, which is not thoroughly documented for a series of reasons. The underneath is the ground below the main level, a floor that is completely devoid of any lighting and requires an artificial light source to be explored. Not much is known about this area as exploration parties go missing after a few days without any notice or contact, even when equipped with speakers to act as distress beacons. The noises heard on the floor above can also be heard in the underneath, but here they are much more amplified and clear. Laughter can sometimes be heard from afar, however, most wanderers who have experienced it simply ran away out of fear, retreating back to the upper zone of the level, so it is unknown where it is being emitted from. It is thought that this area has an extremely high entity count, which could help justify the missing parties. The pitch black would also help many entities hide and ambush any unsuspecting wanderers, slaughtering them on the spot and leaving them no chance to warn anyone quickly enough. Microphones and cameras do not work in the underneath. Microphones will either emit static or obnoxiously loud noises, which can be deafening for a small period of time. Cameras will simply record record a still black image with nothing else to be seen. Any file details for captured imagery are simply corrupted. Traversing the lower area of level 95 is not recommended at any cost. No one knows for sure what happens down there, and death is guaranteed. Level 96 is a non-Euclidean, seemingly infinite maze of ventilation systems that can potentially lead to any of the first seven levels, if they have any type of AC system. The quality of the ventilation systems vary, from being corroded and extremely structurally unsound, to brand new ventilation shafts with no issues whatsoever. The vents themselves have different layers, which are always fixed on a flat plane, although they can slope up and down to reach the other levels of the vent system. Many vents go in directions impossible or extremely hazardous to follow, such as vents going straight down or up for hundreds of feet or the shafts turning back around, causing many areas to get blocked off by vents overlapping. If you see any of these areas, avoid them, as they can be extremely harmful. If there is a rapid increase or decrease in the ambient temperature of one of the sections of the vent compared to the other, avoid that area, as the shafts can get temperatures around 113 degrees Fahrenheit or go down to negative 24 degrees Fahrenheit in some areas. Condensation is uncommon in this level and the air is generally quite dry, but it may occasionally occur when the ventilation systems get to just above the freezing temperature of water. The water is not safe to drink, but boiling it can give it normal beneficial properties of almond water, and as a means of curing Entity 29. The explored portion of level 97 consists of a small island surrounded by a saltwater ocean. This island is covered mostly with overgrown grass, as well as some moss-covered rocks. Scattered throughout the island are a number of weathered gravestones. Occasionally new gravestones will appear, though this is a rare occurrence. Level 97 has no day-night cycle, and always appears to be nighttime. The sky is starless, but a large crescent moon can always be seen in the sky. There are no clouds or precipitation, but level 97 is always covered with a thick fog. In the center of the island is a large white lighthouse. Because of the nature of level 97, the interior of this lighthouse has not yet been explored. The light at the top is always shining and slowly spins around, breaking the fog. Any object that the light shines on will be destroyed through unknown means. The ocean surrounding the island stretches as far as the eye can see, and although it is extremely deep, it has been confirmed not to be bottomless. Offshore of the island is an 18th century sailboat that seems to be frozen in place, with no movement occurring from the waves. Because this ship is relatively safe in comparison to the rest of level 97, the MEG has set up a small outpost there. Populating the island in level 97 are several of humanoid entities known as ghouls. These ghouls resemble corpses in a state of extreme decomposition. When a ghoul sees a wanderer, they will walk toward them. Although they can be outrun, there are many of them, so it's easy to get cornered. For this reason, it is not advised to go on the island. 
If a ghoul catches someone, they grab onto them with a strong grip, holding them in place. When this happens, the lighthouse's light will stop spinning and point toward the wanderer, killing them. The first area of level 98 is a small repeating section of a straight, building-lined street with a brick road. The level loops, however, the wanderer also appears to repeat with it. For example, if you stood in the middle of the road and looked straight ahead, you would be able to see many copies of yourself which move at the same time as you. Almost none of the buildings on the street can be opened, except for the building you enter out of, a single diner in the middle of the section of the level. This diner is also the only source of light on the street besides what appears to be a moon in the sky. On the outside of the diner is a large yellow sign lit with the text Downtown Diner, displayed in black text. On the inside, slightly familiar music is heard playing. The smell of breakfast food being cooked wafts through the room from the kitchen kitchen, and soft clanking of pots, pans, and silverware can be heard from the kitchen, though fade as you get nearer and nearer and see that nobody is in the kitchen. Sitting down in one of the diner seats is a chance of summoning a few entities. These entities appear to be people familiar to the wanderer in question, though their faces are unable to be seen, instead looking out of focus, much like a camera. Any attempts to stand up and move toward the entities will make the lights blink off in the diner, and when the light returns will reveal them gone. Any words the entities say will be garbled, as if far away or talked over. Level 99 is sickeningly orange, and even more so distorted, though the photo does not capture it well. The level in a physical sense is normal. The sand isn't soft and the skies aren't solid. The level resembles a red sanded desert with no day-night cycle. The sky is always orange and doesn't seem to change at all. The sand of level 99 looks almost identical to that of the red sand on Earth, if not for the sand in level 99 being entirely comprised of oxidized metals. The sand has a distinct metallic scent and is usually comprised of copper and iron, with the occasional unidentifiable ores. And that was the 100th level. Technically it says 99, but remember we started on level 0. So. So, that was the first 100 levels of the Backrooms. I hope that was informative. Honestly, this video was such a fun concept that I just had to try it out because I hadn't really seen anybody do anything to this extent before. Uh, I might eventually come back and do more, I'm not sure. Again, please go visit the Backrooms wiki. The authors there are doing a great job creating this world and it's the only reason this video exists. It's a fantastic rabbit hole to go down. Thanks again to Jabberwock for helping me out with the music. You can find their Backrooms videos in the description. And make sure to pick up your very own Sagan Hawks plush uh, before 21 days have passed. Um, link in the description. It's Seriously, it would help me out a ton if we could reach the 200 goal. And also, it's just a really nice, high-quality plush. With all that said, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.